Okay, let's get started. We have suffered through fools, and we have suffered through crimes, but they no longer beset our minds, for these are turtle times. My name is Riley Hamilton. <laughs> this is Amy Scarlotta. And that's our new intro. <laughs> wow. How do you feel about that? You're a true bard. Yeah, we suffered through fools. <laughs> We've suffered through crimes. That just rhymes with minds. But they no longer beset our minds, right? For these are our turtle times. Because this is where we feel <laughs> free and safe? Yes. Okay. The world is awful outside of the doors of your home, <laughs> but once we're here, this is a nice, calm, beautiful place. Do you feel that way? Yes. Okay. If it was only a little bit cooler, I did... Uh, we apologize. We did do a sound check, but we do have a portable air conditioner running um, to keep us alive, uh, but I don't think you can hear it. Let's hope you can't hear it. If it, you do hear it, I don't know. I mean, it's not that bad. It just sounds like a low-level hum. Yeah, it's calming. It's but, like how Kathy Hilton needs a fan to yes, sleep. Yes, yes. But if you get annoyed by it, just know that for Amy and I, it's making this recording session <laughs> much easier for us, right? Yeah, I think so. I think they would want us to feel cool and nice and, and happy. I agree. It'll keep our brains from overheating when we're trying to come up with fun quips. Yes, do you think today this recording session is hotter than the last time when we had ice packs on our head? <laughs> maybe. Yeah, right. It is a little hotter, but do you think? I, I think for some reason I think it's like maybe four or five degrees hotter this time. Do you? What okay. do you think? Like on Earth or in my apartment? On Earth. <laughs> I think it got hotter since last week, and yeah, in no, your apartment. But I, no, I don't. It actually feels good in here. I mean, reasonable. <laughs> I'm just saying. But please know why we have that noise. Sort of in the background. Yeah. See, it's different because um, since you are a guest here in my home and we have to be active, it's different than when I'm alone and I can wear like little shorts and right. like just be a disgusting freak and like keep spraying myself with mist and, you know, be doing what I need to do to stay cool. I have to be civilized here. I mean, so it's different. I mean, for sure you could have done that. I mean, you told me no shorts and tank tops, but I mean, you could have definitely done that, but I understand you wanted to wear <laughs> pants or right. And I then, told Riley, <laughs> I have given up on trying to look good for you guys on YouTube. I'm sorry. I'm wearing leggings and I have my hair in a clip. It's just all over for everyone. It's, we it's we get compliments on how we look though. They don't care. They we like do? how we look. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I see comments, they get deleted immediately, but <laughs> they say, sometimes they say, Riley and Amy look really cool and oh. hot today. You're going to like the way you look, yeah. I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, I think, anyway, so I think we look great. I think people understand. Just just know when you're listening to this, you, there's no, you know, you can't know the temperature where we're at, but just imagine it being 90 degrees. What would you do? Right. Yeah, think about how, what we're serving up to you right now, and that we're doing it under duress. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Any <laughs> any good point we make, give us extra credit because we're in a hot, hot apartment. <laughs> and it's just, it's overall in Los Angeles and Pasadena, it's like 90 degrees. Yeah. And it's going to be that way. I think next week it's finally going to be into the 80s, um, which will be nice. So this was like a heat wave? Well, we'll see. Sometimes the, the weather app has been lying. It yeah. keeps changing, so but, I don't know. But then our hottest months are still to come, traditionally, I'm right? I, what's it going to be like in August? The UV index today is 11. Extreme. So, that so means like you're going to get sunburned the second you go outside. I didn't even put sunblock on. I'll, I was going to say, I'll lather you up before you okay. go, but right. that sounds let's, bad. No, let's say, hold on, let's take a break. <laughs> well, this will be for YouTube. <laughs> He's going to put some block all over me. Actually, I think I'm okay UV wise. There's only a few rays, but they're not even touching me. Well, right? you're like Florida. Do you get burned? Because I get freaking sizzled. My whole ethos and everything about my molecular structure has changed from my Florida life okay. to California. I. No, there's no remnants of my old previous Florida self. Okay. It's every seven years, you know, all apparently all your cells get replaced. Right. And you become a completely cellularly different 
person. I love that. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> We're like crumbling in little pieces every single day. And then by the time seven years comes up, you are fully a new atomic structure. I, yeah. That's what they say. You're like, I'm like, somebody saw Oppenheimer. <laughs> Whoa, oh, do you remember Just... the scene where he talks about that in Oppenheimer? <laughs> He's like, science, baby. <laughs> Dude, they love science in that movie, right? Totally. They were like, did you see some of the equations they were doing on the math oh board? I was like, I go, I saw a number. I was like, there's a four there. There's a three there. But there was some symbols. I love that when, uh, you know, something would come up and he'd be like, that can't be. And he'd go up to the board and, and do it. And he'd be like, see, yeah, can't do it. Right. And he would, he would like erase the long division uh, sign or whatever. It would be like X equals R. And he'd go, no, wait, the long division can't happen. That was like. I'm like me calculating 20%. Yeah. At the restaurant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Did you think, I mean, they sort of made it accessible to a lay person by yeah. having those little marbles dinking around. Yeah. The, no spoilers, but yeah. they were like, this is how much uranium you got, you idiot. We have you idiots. Here's four more marbles. That was kind of It reminded us. me of like in elementary school. Did you ever have, like sometimes it would be like um, you, I feel like they would always use the marble system for like counting down to a pizza party or something like what would they take marbles or put marbles i think in? it was both like when there would oh. be a triumph or, or, or a fall from grace or like a bad kid yeah and you'd be like class clown you can blame uh. yeah hypothetically riley just <laughs> had to be outspoken during the class we take three marbles away from our pizza yeah, and everyone party kick your ass yeah i had the gold star system <laughs> okay riley hamilton and then it would be like every single day you either got a star if you were a good kid uh -huh. or no star and okay. then by the end of the week i think you got a little something I don't someone know. should have given oppenheimer some little star stickers what's his name uh matt damon yeah <laughs> don't you think that would have been kind of sweet <laughs> his general stars he's gonna yeah i think that would have been really really nice and he puts them right where the general remember when he replaces his general jacket with a suit yeah that was kind of fun did thought, you like oppenheimer i did not the most i thought it was good um i like a four star <clears throat> well i told you this but for the audience if you read the news, you may have heard <laughs> I was in a screening of it was big news in L.A., but I went to do the full Barbenheimer last Saturday and uh, we were seeing Oppenheimer first and the fucking fire alarm. I guess we still don't know the true details. Someone. I guess maybe pulled the fire alarm one asshole. hour in. And of course it was like the biggest day in movie history for the last like many years. Right. And they had to just make everyone go outside. There's just all these people wearing pink. There's like and Oppenheimer people glasses. wearing yeah Oppenheimer fedoras, <laughs> just total chaos. We didn't know what was happening. We, it was literally right at the part this isn't a spoiler but when they're like getting the gang together like when they're going around trying I thought to it was gonna happen when the when the nuke went off. it didn't <laughs> that, no, it that right would have before. been intense yeah um no this was like one hour in when it just finally starts picking up Damn. and they're trying to recruit scientists um and the lights turned on whoa and we were like what the hell was your suspension of disbelief suspended <laughs> Yeah, we were all looking around and we thought no one freaked out, which was nice. Like how loud? Well, the we couldn't there was no alarm that oh. we could hear. Oh. Like Oh, that makes it less. So that's scary. why we don't know what actually happened. It was all through rumors. The only thing that happened in our theater was that the lights came on. Okay, so maybe someone pulled the alarm, a little stinker. Maybe uh -huh. someone dressed they, like, like Oppenheimer. Immediately turned it off or something. Or or they don't allow big, loud alarms. They just, it goes to whoever headquarters. Right. And did. then they take the next steps. I lights don't know. went up. And just the lights the, went up. And did the film stop? But no, it was still going for, like, we were all confused. A few people left to go tell someone so that we thought it was just that the lights turned on and that they were going to turn them back off and we yeah. were going to continue, but n no one ever came. Then finally someone came to like a movie goer came to the door and was like, I guess there was like a fire alarm or something. He was like, we should probably all go. And the second he said that everyone stood up and started leaving. Cause you know, we're all scared of everything now. And of like, course. if someone says we should probably go, you're going to so go. Just a random, but movie it was goer? not an AMC employee, Whoa. which, we never heard anything until everyone was outside and finally they were like, the fire department's coming. We'll let you know. And we hung around for like 30 minutes after we left, but the movie was still on for, I don't know, 10 plus minutes, but with the lights on. And then, um, 
they basically said our movie was at 140 and they said that they were going to honor or like keep showing any movie that started three and after. Okay. So we were fucked and our Barbie screening wasn't till seven thirty. So we went to Barney's Beanery oh my God. and hung out for like four hours. Well, silver lining. I guess. That's kind <laughs> <of fun. laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, so anyways, so when I did see Oppenheimer, I, I saw it again on Tuesday. I rewatched the first hour, okay. which actually I was fine with. Yeah. It was, again, 100 degrees. I was happy to be in there. Yes. Um, but I liked it. Um, I don't think it's perfect, but I thought it was good. Okay, good. What did you think? Yeah, I really loved it. I mean, I'm wow. my, and you're my, not even a Nolan head, right? No, I'm not a Nolan head. I I have reappreciated Interstellar after watching it multiple times. I like Dunkirk. I don't like Inception. Okay. I think that's kind of bad, or not for me. Uh huh. Um, but this one, I I'm grading movies on a curve now because there's just <laughs> such dog shit yeah. movies. So I'm like, the fact that Christopher <laughs> Nolan got to make a huge budget movie about this, you know, the man who invented the atomic <laughs> bomb. It's what three hours long. Yeah. What's his name? Killian Murphy? Yeah. So he was amazing in it. Yeah. I'm only going to watch this probably, you know, once, which usually my barometer is if I want to watch it again. Um, that may- means, like, I really loved it. But I don't need to see this movie again to appreciate what it did the right. first time. And also, I want to honor movies at this scale. Right. You know? But, yeah, overall, I thought it was, you know, awesome. All the acting was really good, I yeah. thought. So good. So fun. So many fun faces. Great casting. As yeah. someone in casting, you must have appreciated. It I was, was like great selections. I go, Josh Hartnett. God oh my God. Damn. Yeah. They're bringing him back. Oh my gosh. He was, it was such a perfect yin yang of, you know, Pearl Harbor, Japanese aggression. Yes. Our response. Yes. <laughs> why? Because Josh Hartnett was in um, Pearl the, Harbor. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> so that's why Christopher <laughs> Nolan cast him. Maybe as a little wink. Yeah, that's cool. And then uh, did you like Barbie? I did like Barbie. Okay. You hated it? <laughs> I didn't hate it, but I thought the story was horrendous. You don't need to think about it. Don't think about the details. That's right, but they irrelevant. Literally, they literally said, don't think about this. Which it's I don't irrelevant. Think, why? It's irrelevant. <laughs> who <'cause>, cares? <laughs> so, they, so we're supposed to know that who cares. Like, we're just supposed to think, who cares about any of this? Just know. I'm just like, I feel like it was Inception level, where it's just like, just... Don't worry about the ins and outs of how they get in and out of here. Just yeah, but enjoy the show. I didn't like any of the real world scenes. Okay. I didn't think those were necessary. I wish it was all just in Barbie They land. blew their load on Barbie land for sure. Yeah. I really, I liked Barbie land and I wanted more of like the music montages. I loved when Ryan Gosling was singing that beautiful song. <laughs> yeah. I liked the, when all of the guys sing push <laughs> by, was that, is that push? Yeah by uh, matchbox 20 yeah like those those scenes the ken world was really fun when yeah. ken took over i think it could i don't <laughs> think it had to have the wow. real world you're like the only good parts of barbie were the parts with ken i mean i mean <laughs> I'll, it really was a, it's, ken, it's a hot take. ken heavy movie uh, they, ultimately ken is ken is very funny or yeah. ryan gosling specifically is very funny they gave him all the like the laugh meat. lines and yeah. the fun the three best scenes I thought were, I, I don't know. I just wish that it would have been more of like the musical montage wizard of Oz with no real world. Yeah. Because I mean, she was comparing it to wizard of Oz, but the real world in that movie is like nothing. Right. It, you know, it's like, yeah. it's the very beginning and then it's like a dream sequence and then it ends and she's back or whatever. Right. So I just, I didn't like how much time was spent in the real world. And also they were like, don't care about this. Don't care about wh- who. <laughs> also the real world was so silly. Like Will Ferrell was so silly and all yeah. those people, they felt like so cartoonish. So there was no, difference in those worlds right Right. so i don't know yeah um well like i said i had spent uh roughly four hours at barney's beanery before i saw it so i was a little juiced up oh um but did i tell you that we so we waited all that time we were like finally we get to see a movie we went to go see barbie and the fucking air conditioning wasn't working in no the barbie theater she was in their full-blown flop flop a (laughs) rooney it was all these girls in pink like uh Natalie went to get a bunch of those um, I saw people popcorn, like, uh, you know, the little, what do you call them? Like the little popcorn uh, containers that yeah. you can get on the side, like the cardboard ones. They were giving those out. Um, Natalie went and requested like 20 of them and we were fanning ourselves. And some of our friends straight up left because they're like, why would I yeah. sit through this? This is awful. Yeah. And then luckily like 15 minutes into the movie, it kicked in. Good. Okay. Oh, that's okay. 15 minutes. It wasn't bad. that bad, but right. I was like, what else is going to go wrong? I know for real. And then, okay. So 
but so you liked Barbie overall. <laughs> but I thought it was um, fun. I think, I think the my TikTok right now is a lot of people giving it a ton of credit for being extremely deep, and oh. I'm like, I did cry at the end because it was you know made to make you cry in that home yeah. movies montage. Like I was just like, that's just always going to make me cry, even if it was a commercial for like health insurance. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I was like, th- I just home videos with like a Billie Eilish song underneath yeah. is going to make you cry. Yeah, that was a beautiful song. Um, <laughs> well, um, but people are really like acting like it's like the subversive moment of our times. And I'm like, I mean, it was more subversive than it needed to be. Like that was cool, but it wasn't particularly divisive to yeah, me. And, and I don't, yeah, not to me either. And I, I can't give m- movie credit just for how subversive it is. I mean, it, right. in my opinion, I want to enjoy watching the entire <laughs> thing and it have a good plot or whatever. And also, I'm not sure why everyone is so excited about a Mattel universe. Like, we just got over a Marvel <laughs> right. cinematic universe, which was awful. And then now Mattel wants to make Polly Pocket and oh Hot God. Wheels. Lena fucking... Denham's Polly Pocket. Lena Dunham's With Polly Emily Pocket. Collins. Well, whatever. I mean, it could be good, but eventually the the Mattel, the the wealth of Mattel material is going to run out and we're just going to be with another garbage cinematic universe that right. sucks worse than DC or Marvel. I'm just, why are we excited about another shitty cinematic universe based on toys? Right. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Well, that's why it was so nice not to, I'm like almost slightly embarrassed to have participated in Barbenheimer because it's like dorky, but like a, I just like being at the movies all day. Oh, so I was happy to do it, but that's why it did feel nice that for some reason, whatever we decided culturally to have the light and the dark of Oppenheimer and Barbie, where it was like a palate cleanser either way. Like it was like, I had my dark movie for adults that like made me like think about things. And then I had my like shiny sparkle fun. Barbie made me think about things. <laughs> well, I told Jimmy, I was like, Barbie turned me against men. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't like when the men took over and the world was just <laughs> singing Matchbox 20 and kind of doing karate. I mean, I actually thought that was like a great wings twist. And beer. <laughs> it was a funny, like I didn't expect it. Yeah. So I thought that was fun. Yeah. I wish the whole movie, that could have been the plot of the movie without the real world influence. Ryan Gosling could have figured out the patriarchy right. some other way. And I would have just loved to be in Barbie world the whole time. It had more music, more dancing, just more silly stuff. Yeah. The real world was awful. And I think that was all reshoots. Oh, really? Yes. I'm pretty sure. I looked up what the reshoots were, which usually reshoots. I mean, they do it all the time, but sometimes it's an indicator of a bad film that, yeah. that they need to revamp or whatever. All I think most of the real world scenes were reshoots so they must have been like this has to have some connection to the real world or right. we don't understand barbie land in connection with i don't know right also why do they show the mattel corporation if the <laughs> if mattel is going to be a part of the cinematic universe it's like if if the first spider-man movie had marvel in it like yeah the company in the office and then you're expected to make more um you know, Marvel movies, like, is that office always going to be in the rest of the movies? They didn't really plan right. this out uh, in right. terms of a Marvel center. Which it appeared to be um, in Burbank because yeah. Warner Media was right behind it, which I didn't know if that was a dig at Warner Media or if they were like, put Warner Media in. <laughs> I swear, <laughs> I think it was, I think it was the latter. <laughs> put Warner Media in. Wouldn't it be cool if there was just Warner Media? But then they took a dig at Warner Media. I went to the bathroom for 10 minutes because yeah. I was so bummed out about the movie. <laughs> but Megan said that there was a Justice League joke, about, oh, which is also okay. Right? Did you yeah. see that? I that sounds familiar. I need to see it again. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm waiting for the thing is with this heat wave going on, I intend to see a movie as often as possible at this point. Yeah. I still I mean, I miss Dial of Destiny. I still want to see that. Mm-hmm. Um there's a couple other good things coming out, right? Yeah. Um What else? I don't know. <laughs> Mission Impossible <laughs> already came out. I love it. I know. It. Uh, I, um, I mean, Oppenheimer and Barbie was the big one. I don't, yeah. I don't even know what's coming out in August, but whatever. Yeah, I'm on the same track. We yeah. go to the Regency Adam- Academy uh-huh. cinemas. Have you ever been there? I have. Oh, my God. It's like, Isn't it's it like, like a dollar? It's like five dollars. Yeah, but it's kind of a nightmare. I mean, I haven't been. It's a to... rough crowd, and uh, <laughs> the screen is garbage. But the screen is so. Is you didn't so... see Oppenheimer there, did you? I did. Come on. We had. We, we had we're being frugal now. <laughs> I, I hate to say it on pe- uh, you should on the podcast. Yes, that would be totally worth it. But we don't have an because AMC that's IMAX convenient. is included. But we don't have an AMC that's convenient enough. That would make every movie going experience like 
two a hours. Well, well, like, yeah, and add an extra hour to it. A full blown schlep. This is yeah. the most convenient theater, but it is dog shit. Right <laughs> when the atomic bomb <laughs> went off, two kids got on each other's shoulders and blocked the screen for like two minutes. I go, get down! Get down! It, so it's, it is rough and rowdy, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. I like slaved over. I was, I mean, I got over it quickly, but. It was like impossible to get tickets to the 70 millimeter IMAX because right. there's only two theaters in LA that do it. So I just did regular 70 mil and it looked great. Yeah. But like, I was like, hmm, like wonder how the IMAX looked. Yeah, yeah but I wasn't <laughs> sure because the movie has, you know, huge set pieces, like not CGI, but like special yeah. effects, set pieces or whatever. But a lot of the movie, like 90% of it is just beautiful looking cinematography of like you know, meetings and boardrooms yeah. and him at the lake and stuff. Like, I don't know. What was really necessary for, for IMAX? I mean, I guess it would all just look beautiful. Like yeah. seeing Los Alamos. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was just, it looked great in 70 millimeter, but I think there was probably some cropping that I was experiencing because, you know, the IMAX screen is like square. Yeah. So that's different. There was but some cropping at Re- Regency Academy. <laughs> you could tell that the guy fell asleep that he was doing it and the, and the screen just went to the left hand side of the theater. He was for getting a like G chats <laughs> in the bottom corner yeah. during it. Um, yeah. I saw, um, we've talked about this movie here before, but, um, and I still forget the name. Uh, <laughs> the Ridley Scott movie, last duel. The last I saw the last duel there, and that movie is already pitch black. Yeah, and so seeing it at the Regency Academy, I was like literally squinting the entire movie. <laughs> so you have a history with Regency <laughs> Academy. Yeah, I mean, I love a bargain. I used to. I love a bargain. There's a, it's not there anymore, but in Redondo Beach, my whole life there was a two dollar theater. Oh, so nice. And uh, like second run, and I went there forever but it was also a rough crowd like there'd be like beer bottles like rolling down the aisle during it but yeah there's just no reverence for movies and like at alamo or where what are the other like nice theater arc line yeah it was like if you make a noise <laughs> like someone's gonna rip you out of your chair and pull you aside <laughs> yeah like i was in arc light and i wasn't even making noise and they tapped me and they said you know please be more quiet <laughs> can <It's>, you leave <laughs> Huh? They're like, can you leave? Yeah, can you leave, please, immediately? <laughs> did you see that um, Quentin Tarantino did a full Barbenheimer? He did? No. Yeah, did, in which, Westwood. Did he... he went to see Oppenheimer, and then he walked across the street and was like, one for Barbie, please. The Westwood is a Regency, isn't it? Maybe. Because they always show at the Regency Academy, they always show the Fox Theater or okay. whatever in Westwood, and I think it's okay. owned by Regency. Yeah, there's like the Fox and the Bruin, right? I, I, They're like Kitty Corner. I've never been to the other one, but okay, okay. so... Did they show him like walking? Uh, I saw him buy his ticket and it was a tweet and someone said that he did both. Wow. One for Barbie. <laughs> I don't know if that's what he said, but I, that's what I imagine he said. Yeah. Which as we all know, that's where Sharon Tate goes yes. to see her own movie, Margot Robbie. It all ties in. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Well, let's end <laughs> movie talk. Um, that was the movie minute. Let us know how you felt about Oppenheimer and Barbie. Are we way off base? Do you hate me for not liking Barbie let yeah, me know please comment yeah I'll just end this by saying do you think that Quentin Tarantino was stoked when oh my god <laughs> yeah I got excited when um Margot Robbie's Totsies came out of those shoes and they kept showing her feet over and over again uh, apparently there he was hooting and hollering so much <laughs> they had to ask him to leave you didn't see that part of the news story I didn't make they showed it, it twice <laughs> when right when her foot oh oh because her arches start to go down and yeah she starts to become flat-footed yeah Oh, that was really Apparently, she said that she always likes to do her own insert shots, so they were definitely her real feet. She said that? Yeah. She always likes to do her own insert shots? That's she said. All right. Okay, <laughs> cool. All right. I mean, that's good, I guess. It's always her on camera. She said that she doesn't like when they like show hands or whatever, and they're just someone else's hands, right. which I guess I get, you know, yeah. you don't they, want to be judged for they, someone else's... Y- yeah. Uh, phalanges or or what if their acting sucked like the stunt double or whatever they, they didn't do the arches in the barbie way yeah. and you're like i don't want it to get lambasted <laughs> for a bad performance it's not me exactly wow so every time you see her feet or hands it's actually her that's what she said do you think that Jax saw oppenheimer to be honest i don't <laughs> think he would have he didn't go to either one yeah 
I feel like he's like, Barbies are for girls. I think he probably said Barbies are for girls. <laughs> and I, I don't think he's a big film buff. I think no. he likes Caddyshack and National Lampoon's <laughs> Vacation and... Step Brothers. Step Brothers and other, you know, 80s Bill Murray, Ghostbusters probably, but I Do don't you think, think he's Schwartz a- did Barbenheimer. No. Well, I guess they're all in Tahoe. Are they still in Tahoe? I don't think they do the things that you and I do. <laughs> They're a different breed. Ariana is the hippest. We've said this so many times. Yeah. Ariana is like the technically, I would say, the hippest of them. Like the most not uh, Hollywood-esque. Right. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Like, right. Uh, I think she's, you know, I think she would have, if she had been around, probably would have. Right. But she was in Fiji. She's in Fiji, yeah. Um, well, you want to switch to that other garbage we have to talk about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Should we do Fiji or Tahoe first? I don't have much to say about Ariana competing in Love Island. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, she's not competing. Well, she's hosting <laughs> or whatever. I watched a little bit of it. I'm not a Love Island fan. I don't need any more reality television in my life apart yeah. from Bravo. I also don't really like competition mm-hmm. reality shows, mm-hmm. except I guess I like Survivor a little bit. Okay. Um, so I just saw it, it just Ariana was like hosting some games. They were doing the like um, the game where like you you know something about someone like it'd be like, what is Amy's favorite color? And I'd be like, yellow, you know, and, uh-huh. and you and you reveal the tile at the same time with your uh-huh. words on it. Like What's the it? newlywed game? Yeah, they're playing that. And I was like, okay. And then they were all so stoked to see Ariana, though. Oh, really? And it was, it's, it's nice for her dream to be fulfilled. And they loved it. So it's like, who cares? I'm not mad at it or anything. It's just my enjoyment for Vanderpump Rules doesn't intersect with like anything they're doing outside. Except right. like emo night or whatever. I yeah. just, I want to keep Vanderpump Rules in its own universe so i didn't really yeah i feel that way too um and sheena sort of uh ripped that ability from us when she did a little spoiler yeah this week what was it, it was her amazon live yeah stream so i think what is it yeah amazon live i guess just you, they you know they pay you to go live and they ask you to talk about anything and the, i i've been watching southern charm i yeah. got caught up i'm now oh, wow. officially a charmer okay I, I, know, I know everything in the southern Charm universe even the spoilers for season nine and madison does a huge spoiler filled like <laughs> amazon live on season eight because okay. it's when she reveals that she is engaged okay. and no one has heard this yet uh-huh. so she's giving firsthand you know news to amazon live so i think maybe the function of these amazon lives is that they expect you to at least reveal some like noteworthy thing that could they potentially must be really go. paying them a lot yeah i think so. they feel obligated i mean for madison to reveal that huge news first to amazon live what makes me think that's like the bar that's yeah. set yeah for reality stars when they go on these so i think sheena had um was semi obligated to reveal something big. But yeah. I think that, that was too big because it, it, she revealed two scenes that for sure will be in season 11. I, I feel like, though, in my vision of. So if, if you didn't see this and if you are willing to be spoiled, Sheena said what we kind of already knew a little bit, but that um, they were in Tahoe, that. Lisa descended a staircase. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> wait they were in Tahoe. This wasn't before the Tahoe trip. Did I she say? I think it was in Tahoe. So like... she brought Graham. <laughs> so she brought Graham to Lake Tahoe to surprise James on their Wolf by Vanderpump. I'm telling. You, that's what I said last week. Where I was like, "This is insane." Okay, I thought it was Villa Rosa. I thought, and then he just brought Graham on the trip. Okay. Well, well maybe I I'm wrong. We I, should... I, I thought she said she descended down the stairs, and I just, I guess, I assume Villa Rosa. But if it's Lake Tahoe, wow. But, the commitment to this. I swear, at okay, least because right. all of the other stuff that's been happening, I don't know if I had bias where I thought it was Tahoe, so then I pictured her story in Tahoe. So anyways, either in Tahoe or Villa Rosa, Lisa descends a staircase holding Graham, and they're all like, holy shit. They said that the light was behind her so you could barely see her. They were all blinded by like the an view. angel. Like an angel. And then finally when she got to the bottom of the stairs, the sun just, you know, was able to shine through and it just completely... It was like Oppenheimer. <laughs> Everything is like Oppenheimer. It's, it was like Oppenheimer. Blasting them with light. Yeah. And then Benny Safdie with, yeah, the with the sunscreen. lotion on his face. Yeah, and then apparently James started, you know, he just broke down on his knees and started crying. He goes, who is that? is that who i really think it is and lisa said it is graham <laughs> she's like don't look too closely <laughs> yeah, and, and then she even says she goes oh 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 so then she says well sorry you were telling us no you, you do said, it. take over well, she, 
take a little break. <laughs> she <laughs> she says, um, this there was this well behaved dog that looked like Graham in Lisa's arms. So first of all, Lisa's <laughs> holding Graham like what? I'm trying to picture like his arms like I don't like know. Jesus with yeah, a lamb. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> and then Graham go or J- James is like, Who who is this dog? Could it actually be the dog I think it is? And then Sheena goes, No, it's too well behaved. <laughs> Graham would never just sit in Lisa's arms like a perfect, beautiful lamb. Yeah. And then Lisa goes, no, 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 it is Graham. <laughs> it's been the Graham from, you know, your previous relationship, and is, he is here with me now. And uh, Sheena was like, let's wash off his tail and make sure it's not a meet the Fokker situation or <laughs> meet the parent situation, you know, where he painted the yeah. tail because Graham was that different. Uh, different. Yeah. Um, so different that they renamed him. So <laughs> different that they're like, the old Graham, the old Graham name doesn't even fit this guy anymore do you think part of me thinks that james always thought that name was dumb as shit and that like raquel was like how about graham cracker like graham crackers right. and he was like okay yeah i mean i i <laughs> yeah he yeah he knew it was just because you know remember when james broke down about graham getting hurt yes um he was like paul graham cracker and i was like yeah. oh i didn't even know his full name was graham cracker until i, I that like moment. graham without cracker yeah. if i knew it was just graham i think yeah. that's a nice name but distinguished I don't, do you think hippie is better than graham <laughs> no okay yeah, I, think I think it's, it's weird, but I think uh, James just wanted to remind us all that George Michael is his godfather. I think so, too. But it was a kind of tenuous connection to George Michael. <laughs> it was like this my, George Michael, my godfather. Don't you guys remember? He had a dog at one point in his life named Hippie. So I'm naming my dog after his dog. It's weird. Right. It's you weird. don't normally give dogs legacy names. Right. Did, and uh, Hippie's just inherently not. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what your relationship is to hippies, but. I, <laughs> I don't love God that name. damn fucking hippies. <laughs> yeah, I'm more of the like get get out of here hippie. <laughs> but I don't know that. And also, I was like, you can't rename a five year old dog. No, I, dogs know their name. Like that's why explicitly. That's why is it a different dog? I mean, that's the thing. Like, I watch so many TikToks of like. I mean, I've had dogs. My parents have a dog. You have dogs, but like, I watch TikToks all day long of like a big group of dogs, like either at like a daycare or like a training or whatever where they call them one by one and they all come yes when their name. their name is called yes they fucking know their name well we switched archie at six months to okay. louie but that's sort of they, they both have two syllables which so graham and hippie he is was already, louie and you he, switched yeah to, he's to, archie yeah. yeah we almost could we would have done almost louie but we just always had archie in our minds and he has adapted to the new name i mean it's two syllables. He maybe with us, he thinks that's his name or you yeah. know, his nickname or whatever. But he has well, that's young. switched. Yeah, but also I give people a pass if like you adopt an older dog and they have a shitty name and you want to change it. Yeah. Like, fine. Like, you might still have to, you know, see how they react. But I'm like, it's literally your dog. Like, yeah. I don't. I'm okay just because like you have to take everything with a grain of salt especially on a reality show especially with Vanderpump Rules and especially with Lisa yeah Lisa will do things that will (laughs) blow your mind and you'll never know she did them is is a part of this about like Graham's previous like paperwork or something that he was registered as a biting dog Uh a menace to society Uh and he (laughs) was registered as having six dog bites on various <laughs> right. people like he has no chances left or something i mean it but just doesn't does... he have like a serial number like yes of course of course <laughs> that's why it's like that theory doesn't make any sense but i can't really see the rationale for why he changed his name right and also why he wasn't a part of this process in any way until lisa walked down the stairs of lake tahoe with right graham in her arms it's like, well that's what a... the thing is like I get, so when I ultimately read that entire article, you know, assuming that Rachel's mom isn't full of shit, which... I believe her. 95%. Yeah, totally. She, it seems like a person who is not accustomed to the spotlight, had the worst thing given to their name besides yeah. their daughter, or, you know, her daughter being yeah. Raquel, and just gave every single fact. Yeah. And the, the facts were so complicated and exactly. so convoluted that I felt truth in them. Totally. And like, when you actually read it... You know, first of all, I think potentially to give Graham, a.k.a. Hippie, benefit of the doubt, I have a feeling he was living a fairly chaotic lifestyle and probably wasn't being taken care of in the way, assuming he's a high-maintenance dog, he was probably, like, 
getting shifted around from like apartment to whatever, like her staying over at Sandoval's, like all this stuff. Like if you're a high, like dogs need like structure. Yes. And uh, especially if they're like an anxious dog or whatever. So I have a feeling that that probably didn't help his behavioral issue in the first place. Like he needs like an extremely boring person that like doesn't do anything outside of the ordinary enough for him. No, she was like, her life was in turmoil. Yeah. And so that probably made it worse. But when you actually read what they went through to try and make it work for him, it was actually all above board. Yeah. And also what we always say. I take back what we said last time when we were like, I can't think of anything worse. Oh, well, we didn't know all the facts. (laughs) We did not. I don't think Raquel's mom's story had come out yet. We were just getting that first information. All the news headlines were like, she threw him out of a moving car uh, yeah yeah <laughs> like, of course and it always just assume, like there is no like people are like Raquel is now officially a super villain or yeah. whatever it's like there's no way Raquel's mom is not that villainous I'm yeah. almost no one except a serial killer or yeah. uh, you know a psychopath would which we're not why would Raquel's mom also be a psychopath <laughs> right w- would do that w- would yeah. try to just like throw a dog away yeah it, it seems like all those steps were taken I don't know why Raquel wasn't involved in this process more yeah. I don't know why James wasn't alerted beforehand that's the thing why didn't lisa alert james well also the two weird parts to me are like it's all above board they found like a golden doodle rescue like they did everything you could do he was on a biting journey yeah like that. he bit the rescue woman he bit the owner he bit, of the rescue he bit his adopter straight after the rescue he, he bit the the guy who was coming in to evaluate <laughs> the no dogs bite <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> and so the only weird part is I need more details on the, in the story, it said that the rescue asked Lisa for money. Uh, yeah. That's I need weird. To, I, I need to know when the Vanderpump Dogs Foundation stepped into this story. Right. That's the missing piece. And, and secondarily, why, if they were so desperate to like figure out a solution, why they wouldn't have given James the opportunity to adopt him right. from the rescue. Yes, James... Or James, from the trainer. James could have almost been alerted at every step of this journey, from Raquel, from him first having a behavioral issue, to Raquel going into the mental facility. There are so many ways yeah. that James should have been a part that of this. That said, if her mom was the, taking leadership of this uh, scenario... Uh, we must remember that James called this woman a fat bitch at Thanksgiving. Yeah. So maybe she didn't want to call. Him. But apparently, remember, she always talks about his uh, dick size. That's true. So they're enemies. So who who knows? I mean, this story is is stretches the <laughs> limits of credulity. Is that what you say? Stretches yeah. the limits of what I can <laughs> believe. There is a lot of red herrings in here. A lot of pieces that need to be filled. Yeah. And it was more. And then, like we started saying, it's really interesting that Sheena just divulged this entire story. Oh my god! Yeah. S- almost a scene breakdown. Totally. She wrote like a screenplay. I could imagine it perfectly. Yeah. Um, and then there was a headline saying that she might get in trouble for that, which I was going to say like. Since when are you allowed to just say yeah, Lala said. everything that happens on an upcoming show, which I can imagine them using Lisa coming down with the dog in like the promo. Yeah. They're not even, yeah. I mean, they're not even, they're not supposed to do press, which I guess Amazon live technically isn't press, but you're right. definitely probably not allowed to tell specific scenes. And Sheena told another one too. Another, what was the other one? The other one is that she told on that same Amazon live. She said that at Lake in Lake Tahoe, they all went to a meditation retreat together with Tom Sandoval oh, shit. and Brock decided, I guess, to go golfing that day. <laughs> so it was Tom Sandoval and whoever was left there, Ali, James and Lala and Sheena. And Sheena expected to go with Brock, but she said that the meditation retreat, which who knows, or a producer just whispered (laughs) and said, hey, put these two together. Sheena had to do her meditation retreat one-on-one with Sandoval. It's so it's so Sandoval and her have this that hour. Great. Yeah, it, it, it <laughs> honestly would have it would have been amazing to see if it hadn't been spoiled. So I should have we should have had a spoiler. We had a spoiler alert before this, right? I don't know if we'll put in the um, the notes. That the whole first hour is Oppenheimer, Barbie, and Vanderpump Rules spoilers. Major spoilers. And we also have said, like, we don't really want to spoil season 11. But it's, right. it's these these are so, these stories I are so like big. I feel like we'll forget 
by the time it airs. And also who knows what they're going to do or how they're going like to use it. It's like six months away. Yeah. Or more. And then the last spoiler. Okay. I'm sorry that we spoiled five different things. But this is a real spoiler. I'm just going to tell Amy 30 seconds long. <laughs> so if you don't want any more Vanderpump Rules spoilers, just go 30 seconds uh, starting now. James had See You Next Tuesday on Tuesday again. Oh. Another See You Next like, Tuesday. As in like two days ago? Two days ago. Okay. At, at Sir, again, he just did another flash Instagram <laughs> uh, story where he goes, hey, get over here. I'm uh-huh. doing it. And Sandoval was there. And Sandoval <gasps> and James were photographed <gasps> and filmed just having a laugh together, talking, sitting, Is Sandoval back? I, I swear, I think, I think that he has made the steps towards... Sheena's not saying for sure that she's forgiven him yet. James, I, I really think he's on the path to forgiveness. Oh with my God. James. I know that whatever I'm not, you know, he's a villain. What he did was horrendous, et cetera, et cetera. But this gets me excited to watch the show. I mean, the tides are turning. And like I said, when this was, we were in the thick of, the hatred i was you, saying you said it how many seasons 10 seasons long yeah every single person on the show has yes. been a villain at some point yes. or another and they always come you, back you put it into perspective <laughs> i mean i was like so in the middle of it that i couldn't even think outside but you're exactly right i mean who like, would have ever thought we could have forgiven Kristen? who could yeah. have ever thought we could have forgiven Jax, which some would yeah. say we never did or James <laughs> or James James had horrific things and he still he honestly we, we've said He's it a hundred times he threw it yeah he 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 had an assault allegation alleged at him at the reunion and no one even batted an eye yeah so he totally skated through no I one, feel like I see little smatterings of like people bringing stuff up from James's past but I feel like it doesn't have momentum, at least not right now. And yeah. also Brock got yeah. through it. Brock got through it because like Lala, remember that scene with Lala where she breaks down and just says yeah. Brock's such a good person? And we were all like, okay, well, we like Brock <laughs> Moving again. on. So once the cast moves on and they start to, uh, and we see his progress and we see the actions he took to get forgiveness, I feel like the audience is left just being like, well, we have to defer to the people who, that know him. Yeah. We can't just have all this visceral anger at someone that we don't really know. Yeah. You know what I mean? I That's, like to be guided by the show itself me as well where i'm like i don't really actually care so just tell me what to think thank you yeah yeah i mean i only i only cared about the, well i cared about the sandoval and scandal but I, I cared that i was so wrong about someone i really right. thought that he had you know was completely in love with ariana would never do something like yeah. this again so that blew my mind totally i mean my- it definitely like just soured his entire history like now that we're watching season two on patreon like you have to just see him through a different lens yeah. of the way that everyone, not everyone, but so many people on the show have always hated him. Yes. And you're always like, can you chill? Why do you hate him so much? And now you're like, I guess you were right. I mean, yeah. Stassi and Katie's just <laughs> blind hatred for Sandoval throughout the entire 10 years now makes way more sense. Totally. Like they just have been eye rolling yes. him for 10 years. And yeah. you're always like, why are you so mean to him? Yeah. Um, do, sorry, I think our last bit of news before we get into it is that, that Lala, so she was confirming a lot on Amazon Live too, but she didn't give major spoilers. She just said that Sheena's going to get in trouble. Yeah. And she said that Jax, Brittany, and Kristen are filming their reality show this week. There is a huge chance that right now in Los Angeles, Jax and Brittany are being filmed for oh their gosh. spinoff. We're going to watch it in like February or whatever. And they're going to be talking about how hot it is. Oh, and we're going to remember. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, remember this. <laughs> when you watch that spinoff, remember this could be the day when they're talking about how hot it was. W- what do you think overall? I th- have we talked about the spinoff? I mean, it just sounds boring as fuck. Yeah, I'm, I'm really worried about how much. Well, oh, oh. So the interesting thing that Lala said is she's rightly saying why the hell do they have a spinoff of their own when everyone wants to just see them back with us and we want to film with them right and they want to film with us so why are there these two separate shows it's like you're diluting a lot of entertainment we could have just had them be 10 percent of the entertainment of vanderpump rules it would have been amazing right that's the thing that doesn't make sense because it's not like you know if it's still going to be on bravo or is it supposed to be peacock i think this is a peacock dome okay Because I'm like, if the problem is that Bravo is worried about 
that they were canceled or whatever, even though they're not. They're not. No. Saucy was the one. No. Most, or Saucy and, uh, and Kristen. Kristen is already filming season 11. Like, I think she's going to be in scenes, you know? Right. So then what's the point of, you know, if it was a thing where they wanted to keep it separate so that people couldn't get mad that they were letting them back or bad, whatever? I think but... it's bad blood with production between Jax and someone. Okay. And then Kristen doesn't want the toxicity or she's fine being on both and she's right. going to bounce around. But I think Jax has some irrevocable thing that happened once he left the show. Yeah. You know that split that happened after season eight where he was like, I didn't get fired. We left. Right. And they were like, we fired you yeah. or whatever. They didn't, they didn't tell the details of it. I could have, I think it could have been very acrimonious. Yeah. And we know Lisa can't stand him. I mean, right. she's like, she's, I think she's done right. with Jax. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously that would be amazing to see. Right. But maybe just Jax can't go back to yeah. Vanderpump Rules. Must be. I would love to know. But that, yeah, but like, what is the plot going to be? I feel like they are going to be so reliant on Schwartz coming over, <laughs> yeah. Lala coming over, that it's going to be like, okay, we're just watching like the leftovers from Vanderpump like Rules. Like standing season. in their kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I mean... What if it turns out to be like extremely unhinged? Yeah. And it turns into like this amazing well, lightning in a bottle. Well, I, my theory is that Jax is, you know, on his high horse now. He thinks he's been right about everything in his life and that he's never told a lie, he says. <laughs> you know, and then and then he is going to get all George, of his. Wait, who never told a lie? George, uh, Washington? George Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, George Washington never told. Who's Johnny Appleseed? Johnny Appleseed also never told a lie. Okay. He was the one who he had a bunch of apple seeds in his bucket and he was wearing. Um, like a hat or whatever, like a, a characteristic hat. And yeah. he would just go around and he would plant little apple seeds all across America. And that's how we got our apples. Huh. And then George Washington was the first one to cut down Johnny Appleseed's tree. Do you remember that? I cannot tell if you're fucking with me. <laughs> Do you remember George Washington chopped down yes. oh, a cherry tree? I'm sorry. A cherry tree. Right. He didn't want, he didn't want a cherry tree. He wanted exclusively apple trees on his... <laughs> <laughs> orchard anyway johnny appleseed actually is a mythical what about figure. davy crockett davy crockett was one of the first people ever to i think um what was it he was sort of like a precursor to um lewis and clark okay you know he was just running around he was sort of a pioneer and he would he like, have a coonskin cap yeah he did he had a very characteristic cap just like you said and he would sort of go around <laughs> getting into trouble in the old wild west in the pioneer days okay. he was the first one who was able to chop down trees and build <laughs> fires and i think he was just had a pioneer spirit okay did he have like huck finn energy very much so <laughs> I'm going to keep this chain going. <laughs> this like, how long did I just fake that I know anything about these people? Yeah. David Crockett. Yeah. Huckleberry Finn was definitely emulated after Davy Crockett. That was one of Mark Twain's biggest inspirations for both Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry okay. Finn. Sort of, they both encapsulated the ethos of Davy Crockett and a little bit of Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love this uh, word salad. <laughs> <laughs> just absolutely no it was merit giving, like ai no. <laughs> absolutely no merit to the last three minutes that were spoken um okay so to end our news segment or whatever i don't think do we, we don't have anything else right i don't think so um oh, but yeah. oh you said what if it's good oh right right, right. what if it's good <laughs> johnny Appleseed. what if it's good <laughs> i think that there is a chance that Jax becomes with his hubris, yeah. you know that when people have hubris, like Tom Sandoval, it's yeah. the detriment to everyone. I mean, yeah. mythology has so many instances of hubris. I mean, like Prometheus when he... Oh my God, Oppenheimer. <laughs> like, obviously, when Prometheus <laughs> gave the fire of the gods to humanity, they punished him for it. Yeah. Obviously, there's a notable one who flew um, too close to the sun, yeah. Icarus. Yes. And he had to be cast down because his wings yeah. burned off from the sun. What about the one with the rock up the hill? Yeah, Sisyphusian. Yeah, when Sisyphus uh, had to always, unfortunately, his entire life was spent dedicated to rolling up a boulder up a hill. And then when he finally reached the top, it would just come back down and he had to do it over again. Yeah. So I think there is, like you said, a lot of Prometheus, Icarus <laughs> type of uh, allusions in this Jackson Britney spinoff. But I think Jax, once the pressure is on and the hubris is up, he is going to go radioactive again. So yeah. I think this could have the potential to be unhinged and right. fun. Yeah, maybe the idea of it being his show quote that he always thought Vanderpump oh, was yeah. will make it absolutely insane. Yeah. I mean, what are the odds that Jax is a fully changed hashtag dad life 
<laughs> all my ba- bad behavior is behind me and I will never do one thing wrong again. What are the odds that that is true? None. Yeah, yeah I mean. <laughs> Close to zero. Yeah, it, oh, right. Right. <laughs> right. I'd like to get it to zero. Uh, but uh, no, so I think that, yeah, I mean, I don't think, I think that there's a lot of allusion to this new Jax persona. And I would yeah. be interested interested to see if the old Jax could come back. That could even be the title of one of the episodes. Yeah. The old Jax is back. Jax is back. Yeah, baby. That could, that'll probably be just the first episode back no matter what. In Jax. What's that? Back in Jax? Oh yeah, I, no, I like that one. <laughs> like back in black. That, I think that would be fun. <laughs> so Um yeah, but um no, I, uh, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. We'll just have to wait and see. It's My expectations are like not super low they're also not super high yeah and like i said or we've said my dream is just put them both together what the hell is this total separation yeah it makes no sense yeah okay um yeah want to talk about roni yeah okay do you do we need to get you know do you need a break i don't, I don't really i mean do you i think i we could go straight into it unless do we need to do an a break for the do you want to do it after roni or should we just or is a 50 minute mark good to just take a little break what do you think um maybe we can do an artificial break really and just not go okay all right okay yeah sure all right everyone we are going to take a break we're not pissing so this is not the certified piss break this is not just a, certified yes this is just a commercial break to let whoever our sponsor is have a little bit of time so listen to them and then we'll be right back bye and <laughs> we're back we're back oh that was easy i hope that ad was good i don't know if we're doing factor meals or uber eats or what we, yeah. we got some good uh sponsors yeah um yeah buy up whatever they're selling gang they i, I looked at some of our metrics and they said that 90 percent of people <laughs> that hear our ads end up buying the things that were Ugh. uh Given to them. Imagine the numbers if we were reading the ads. Um, a hundred percent, right? Hundred and ten percent. Hundred and ten percent. Yeah, we. You know. Okay. Yeah, we need. You know, those sponsors and Amy and I are available for any ad reads. That would be amazing. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, what did you think about Roni this week? I thought it was dog shit. <laughs> I thought it was <laughs> so boring. Yeah. I thought it was an absolute slog. I've never been tested, I think, in my all my Bravo <laughs> watching history in terms of how bored I could potentially be yeah. by an episode and by the cast and the pace of the episode, uh-huh. specifically how it was edited, where 10 to 15 minutes were dedicated <laughs> to them just getting yeah. to the Hamptons and sitting around, and then one dinner, and then after dinner. It was like... In real time. Right. I mean, I felt like, we, I, I really felt like we were just watching their six hour full Hamptons night. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen an episode paced like that before. Yeah. What, okay. <laughs> That's just my general <laughs> thought. I mean, I'm ready to go in, but what I did really you think? was curious to hear your take. Um, yeah, I watched it alone, so I had to form my com- opinion completely solo. Oh my God. How was that? <laughs> Hard for me. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it felt like, you know, because usually on a Roni, for a trip like this, we'd be going to like Bluestone Manor, yes. right? Yes. And then when they get there, all hell breaks loose. But in this yes. case, it wasn't all hell. It was like, I don't know, just I mean, like complaints. Yeah. It w- yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Um, well, first of all. This trip felt too early in the show. Yes. Uh, Imagine it was, it's three nights. Three nights with you. But so you have to, we have to always keep in mind that there was probably a month of this show filmed with that other right. housewife. And so maybe the cheese drama and all this lingering drama happened in the three weeks that they were filming before they cut off this person. Right. So this trip would have happened three weeks into filming. And unfortunately, we get it right now. But. That really bodes badly for this cast because the cast really does not know each other. And I don't even feel like they like each other very no. much after watching this episode. Yeah. I don't even think they find merit in each other as people. Right. It was not. It, it's I, uncomfortable. It was really uncomfortable. It was too early as viewers to for us to be on this trip with them. So they yeah. should have they should have reshot or, I don't know, figured out the pace because... I did not want to, I wasn't ready. I don't know them enough to be on a trip with them and see yeah. all their like weird trip foibles and right. all this stuff. So the pacing was bad. Also just how long it took. I mean, did you notice that we spent 
10 full minutes in the car with him. Yeah. And the only thing that was dramatically revealed was that Jessel hasn't had sex in I a, know. a year. Which ultimately was just a depressing conversation where I was like, you guys, mind your fucking business. Right. Which is like, <laughs> yeah, that's that was definitely my thought. Also, they are so... Like, they are so fixated on sex because that is, like, the right. entertainment, uh, like, the, it's the thing like that they can... It's, like, a fast track. Fast track to entertainment. It's, yeah. like, okay, can we talk about sex, different positions, like we said last When's week? When's the last time you had sex? Or, and, yeah, like, what's your freak number? Like, yeah, and where's the wildest place you had sex? <laughs> I swear, I feel like their next episode, they're going to ask, where's the wildest place you've had sex? Yeah. I think the preview even had that in it. Uh-huh. It's, like, this conversation, like... We don't know. First of all, everything is affected by the fact that we don't know them yet. So nothing is like endearing and fun yet. Yeah. And also just using sex for all of their entertainment is just so boring. Right. It's like we need to get to that place later when we actually care about you. All. Right. No, it definitely feels specifically like Aaron hates everyone. Yeah. Um, which I understand in this specific instance, they're extremely high maintenance and uh, I would be annoyed if I was hosting them too. Jenna feels like... She doesn't need to be doing this. She doesn't. She doesn't act above it, but she acts just uncomfortable. She she is actually yeah. She's uncomfortable because she is. She didn't watch Roni, or uh-huh. maybe she did, but she is not. She's not like embedded with the housewives DNA yeah. that all of them have. Yeah, they have all like. I, I swear they were like clockwork orange, <laughs> like uploaded, the, <laughs> uploaded with every single archetype and every single you know dramatic staple of New, yes. New York and, and housewives they feel that way like can yeah. I have you for a second yeah let's complain let's talk about sex Jenna is just like right I, like in the preview she's like I went home for the night because I didn't want to stay here and wake you guys up at 6 a.m. or whatever her <laughs> justification is, is she's like why do I have to stay in the house with you all right and they try you know what I mean it's yeah like, she just doesn't abide by the rules of that the housewives franchise like them right and it's actually that's a better experience. I wish they didn't know. Like you always say, it's like now they've been raised on housewives. Right. So it makes them much worse. It makes right. them harder to watch. So right. I felt that a lot. Yeah. Um, and uh, I will say though that um, Aaron's house was maybe the most set up for the number of people that I've ever seen. I know. Everyone yeah. had a nice room with a bathroom. Yeah, well, Jessel still managed to complain <laughs> that she know. had the kids' room. I was like, sorry that there's like a rainbow on the wall. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Well, I also Don't cannot... get me started on Jessel's complaints. We'll get there. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you want to go... I mean, I I really just have general big yeah. thoughts because there's only three scenes here. Right. I mean, there's only so, three. Yeah, they're complaining about the fact that there will only be caviar served, which so, I'm like, well, why didn't you like get a sandwich for the car ride? <laughs> I have so many thoughts on this on this food drama. First of all, I cannot believe their instinct was to complain about food again after so an boring. episode. Who fucking cares? Fully dedicated about cheese. Also, why can't Aaron? Which is, it, I'm not blaming Aaron, yeah. but can there just be two or three foods? Yeah. Why? Why? Why does everything have to be? This is the a only turkey thing. lunch. <laughs> this is a pizza lunch. Right. I, uh, even any host, you have three options. So right. I don't know. I, and there was like other stuff. Like crudite. There was, yeah, there was vegetables yeah. and stuff. She had catering. Yeah. So, well, that I, was also weird that she hired a specifically caviar caterer. And so then two people were standing there the entire time just putting caviar on chips where I was like, why don't you just like make one platter and fuck off. Yeah. Oh, and then yeah. everyone can just like make their own. Why do we need two human beings standing uh, there <laughs> serving up like one chip I at a no time? I have no idea. I mean, I mean, Erin could have definitely done that plate on her own completely right. and probably done a better job and also had more variety of food. Those right. people were completely wasted. But I was also annoyed that there were like three separate complaints or shade about putting caviar on potato chips. And I'm like, I don't, I have, I don't think I've even ever had caviar, but I am on Instagram and I know how the world works. And these bitches live in New York City and claim to be so bougie that they won't go to catch restaurant. Everyone knows you put caviar on potato chips. Like yes. Martha Stewart does that. Yes. It's like the most commonplace yeah. serving yeah. ever. So they were really grasping at straws. They were like, you're not even going to give me a canapé. Oh, that this is you're going to go high and low, like giving her shit about. I was like, what are you talking about? Yes, I, I, that's how I felt the entire time. Uh, just speaking, because you said it, Sai fell off like 
six points for me in terms of my enjoyment of her. Yeah. She's complaining about everything. She's the toilet paper. Two ply toilet paper. There's no house in the world that would ever have one ply. <laughs> Could you really imagine Aaron's house having one ply toilet paper? No. Although she did say, I watched, I watched what happens. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. If it, if it gets and, uh, if there's more justification. Well, this, not then. really, but um, they were. Um, <laughs> first of all, they showed a montage of all the things that different housewives have brought to their oh. host's house, including so like, like Ramona air conditioning. That's just to make it like this right. is so in line with all of the other right, exactly. like, amazing moments of other franchises. But Aaron said, because um, Candy was the other guest, and she was like, "Do you have?" Because Candy, like, just didn't, clearly didn't watch the show. <laughs> she, like, everything that they were talking about, they had to tell Candy what they were talking about. And uh, Candy was like, well, do you have shitty toilet paper? And she was like, well, sometimes I buy the organic kind. And Candy was like, gave, like, side eye, like, hmm. Uh, okay. All right. Well, Erin shouldn't have said anything. She was. She should have said, of course I have two ply <laughs> yeah, toilet Yeah, I do. Paper. The Charmin softest yeah. Yeah. toilet paper. But, yeah, that was extra. But, but why, like... Why, okay, so we already said sex is, is you know, yeah. where they're deriving entertainment. They're also deriving so much entertainment, or they think it's entertaining, to just complain nonstop about everything. Right. When, when did complaining... I know Ramona complains. I know Luann right. and Sonia complain, like complaining about the fish room yeah. or whatever. But we knew them, and we knew yeah. what set them off, and we had so much other history with them. They are just... 95% <laughs> of the time, they are complaining about really dumb stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah. Stuff. They're like... So yeah, there was the the food and then the toilet paper and then um, they talk about uh, Aaron t- brings up dill again for uh, Jenna. And he goes, I'm going to give Jenna a, f- a full <laughs> load of dill. It's like, why? It's like, she doesn't like it. That's cares? Not, that's not funny. And then later when they're at the restaurant, uh, they talk about how in the morning she's going to make breakfast before they work out. And they're all like, Oh, like I cannot eat before I work out. And she's like, okay, never mind." And then she's like, we'll just have coffee. And then Jenna's like, well, is it this very specific Dreamy kind of coffee? coffee? And I'm like, I'm going to kill everyone. Yeah. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? I have no clue. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> they're like putting Aaron through her paces or whatever, like just trying to give her shit. I think Jenna is legitimately doing it, but it just comes off because right. all of them are doing it. It just sounds awful yeah you know, that she's like, also complaining when she's doing the tour of who gets what room Sai makes a joke like this closet's not going to work for me do you have a accommodations that are lot larger and then she caves and says just kidding but Aaron is like no I don't because she's like I don't even care if you're joking I can't hear one more thing yeah and then Aaron okay so my overall like theory of this is that like last week's episode we were both fine with like, yeah it was like better than we expected yeah uh, i was like a b-level thing it was like the cast is pretty good or whatever but you need to know like what's going to happen next episode to really you know judge it yeah. this was for me worst case <laughs> scenario of what this show will ultimately be uh-huh. i was so down on it yeah i mean well the thing is i'm curious like do you think that everything that happened in it was like a try hard moment? Like, do you think all of Uba's antics yes. at the restaurant, that was yes. bullshit? It was, like, it was it was like a fake Sonia moment. Right. Sonia, you know, would have gone to the kitchen and said like, the chef is so handsome. Like, right. can I get your number or whatever? But it would have felt organic. Uba just felt like, I'm She's the like, silly one. She's like, I stole one. a can. And, it, and Aaron's like, please put that back. It's really <laughs> weird to steal a can. I just, it, that, that, that didn't give me the same like fun. Right. Uh, off the off the wall vibe or whatever. Yeah, that I think she wanted to portray. Also, it was like, I mean, we're just fully going in like yeah. random <laughs> moments. Like when they arrive at the restaurant, Uba started twerking. Yeah, and Jenna goes, the twerking has begun, and it's like, what? You guys weren't having fun at all, and and and, and, and then she's like, the party's sober. here. Sober. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and she goes, the party's here, and it's like, you guys were not partying. There was no. absolutely nothing Everyone fun Everyone was your, like, womp, womp. Yeah, there was nothing fun about your Hamptons time. Your, the, the ride there was so boring, and then now you're pretending like you guys are like this vibrant, fun group. Right. Did I already say that like Aaron surprised me in terms of like she was so much less fun than I imagined? <laughs> she was very much just like She's, standoffish. She was like pissed. Just, and, and I like pissed, but she wasn't <laughs> giving it back to them. Right. She wasn't like... Aaron, you had like a 50 opportunities to say, shut up and yeah. like enjoy what I give you. Like right. you're being monsters. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. She doesn't say it. Right. And, and Jenna doesn't say whenever they offend her, which I know. Sai calls out. Yeah. 
if they need it, I guess they did again, like the way Emily wasn't on the Wyoming trip. Maybe they needed Bryn the, yes. on this trip, which she gets there next week. And maybe she'll l- liven things up a little bit. But that's a huge bad sign. If already we feel the <laughs> loss of Bryn, one, yeah. we took one out Bryn and she was <laughs> Uh, responsible for 90% of the fun of your yeah. group. And also then they show the preview for next week and every single scene was a Bryn <laughs> scene. Did you yeah. watch the preview? They're like, she says she wants to have sex with the trainer. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, don't worry, Bryn is back. I'm sorry. Yeah. That was so boring. <laughs> like without... we gave her a steroid shot and got her out of bed. <laughs> yeah. For, for real. Yeah. I mean, it would be like in old Roni, if Luann was missing, uh, the Bluestone Manor trip would never be horrific without right. her. They would be having so much fun before right. her and then Luann would just add to well, it. Well, like I said, again, I don't want to be a toxic person, but when I heard that yeah. two out right. of the however many how many are there? Well, let's go through them. Aaron, Jessel, Sai, Bryn, Uba, Jenna. Is there only six? Yeah, is there anyone I'm missing? They had seven and then they, they right. dropped them like a bad two habit. Two out of six sober. It, not good. Come on. And they buried the lead with that. They waited till the second episode. <laughs> I was like, you conned us. <laughs> right. They, 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 they really did. They, they kept the fact that, which I don't, we don't want to glamorize drinking. You could drinking. do one. Right. Two, two out of six. <laughs> right. I can have Jill Zarin not drink. Yeah. Well, uh, she's also insane enough that it doesn't matter. Right. But Uba and Jenna, I did like when Uba said, um, I got high one time and I immediately went to the hospital. <laughs> I was like, Uba, I got you there. That is exactly. I'm on I, board with that. If I did a weed brownie, I swear you would see me in an ambulance going to the hospital in one hour. So I liked that. I like that she said, my life is just so perfect that my body, anytime I get away from my perfect life, God it tries to bring her me back. back. Into I was like, okay, reality. That's, all right, at least you justified the yeah. drink or smoke. She, weed. even though I think her antics are kind of fake, yeah. Um, she, I think at least has energy. Yes. Whereas energy. Jenna needs to be lubed up, I think. Yes. And I don't think it's going to happen. So yeah. I just don't know where we're going to go with her and like her, you know, main storyline this week or like her reveal was that like her mom has very recently passed. Jenna's. Yeah. yeah. And she opens up about her genetic disorder. Yes. That I mentioned last week. Um, so it was all kind of like serious and like sad stuff. Like her mom had Asperger's and so she never connected with her mom. Yes. And then Aaron was like, it makes a lot of sense that Jenna's mom was a cold bitch because that's how she is. Yeah, I was exactly. like, Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was, um, I don't think she, I don't think Aaron realized how loaded that was to say. It sounded like that was just like her <laughs> first thought. That right. Came to mind. I mean, it's hard because Jenna just seems like a normal person. Yeah. And like, she's chic like her car is so dope i was like yeah, obsessed was, with her car yeah, that was cool. um but that's not necessarily a housewives make um and then i feel like whenever the sex stuff does come up and even though it's annoying and like disingenuous she's always like well it's different with girls so yeah. we don't need to talk about that yeah and it's kind of like okay so like we get nothing from you and, right. and she won't talk about her relationship we've discovered. Yes. So it's like, well, but I, I, I really don't know what the point of that was. By the time this is airing, everyone will know who she's right. uh, dating. And I guess that person specifically said, I don't want to be a part of the show. Right. But I think you still have to reference them. I mean, right. the only equivalent I can think of is La La, not at all <laughs> referencing Randall. And that was, that led for a full season of, you know, intrigue totally. about who it was so this yeah. is not the right strategy you yeah. should say who it is but then let them know they don't want to appear on camera right. in a subtle way and as we all know nothing pisses off a fellow housewife more than when they have to reveal more than yes. another yep like sure. that will tear them apart yep um and then yeah so they in the car on the way they force jessel to reveal she hasn't had sex in like two years yep and they will not let it go and i'm like First of all, we've talked about this. It is such an annoying, it's an annoying trope in what you were saying of that, a fast track to make things spicy in conversation. But secondly, it's total bullshit. A la Lala again, who talked about being a freak for so many years. And then you find out she also hadn't had sex in years. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, I dare any of you guys to reveal how long it's actually been since you've had sex because every housewife always acts like they get laid every day. Yeah. And I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. Uba put the like 
the what the like the threshold to a, the highest level Eight I've ever heard in my life. She was like, "You only have sex one time in one day." We, I, I don't even take off my clothes for that. I do it what six times. And people, I think people were like, okay, "They were like, what?" All right, all right, Uba. <laughs> and then Jessel, I think Jessel was even lying when they were like, "Okay, but how many times did you have sex before?" And she right. goes, "I don't know, Four. like three yeah. To Four. five times a week? Yeah. And I was like, that's also bullshit. And then she goes, I still give him blowjobs regularly. It's oh my like, God. wait, that's what you're doing? Sai was like, you're at least still giving him blowjobs, right? And she was like, of course. And I'm so like, he just that's gets, so depressing. So he just gets blowjobs <laughs> Yeah, once he a gets week the great no, end of the with, deal. With no sex in, in a year and a half. What a, yeah, what a trade-off that's been in your household. I was like, this is all upsetting and wrong. Everyone's full of shit. Everyone it's like currency. Like people want to act like they're richer than they are and that they have sex more than they do. And everyone's fucking lying. And also this isn't sex related, but kind of putting on airs related. Aaron said on watch what happens live. Um, Andy asked her what the best, which housewife has the best resale value of their home. Oh, right. And Aaron said, well, they don't all own. So, and I was like, I wonder which ones. So sigh. Probably. Sai doesn't own it. Um, um, we haven't seen where Bryn lives, so. <laughs> Who knows where Bryn lives? She's like living in a producer's apartment or something. Living at Villa Rosa. Yeah. Which, did we talk about that last week? We did. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they're, again, going after Jessel about, you know, that she doesn't have sex enough. And, like, then she gets into, I feel like she's, like, the, the weak mouse. Yes. That they're all going to, like, go after where... She said, you know, they made her talk about where she met her husband and then it's revealed that they were roommates first. And then I know that later down the line, there's going to be drama with her husband. Yes. So I feel like we're leading to a point where like she has like a false marriage. Yeah. And then so, she yeah. revealed that she never told her mom that she did IVF, which she did five times. I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah. That's such a big deal to do that. Yeah. Like physically yeah, and like mentally, wow. like that's a huge part of your life when you're doing that. Yeah. And also she said, didn't she say that like they were roommates and then her mom came over <laughs> and said, this man is the who that's your roommate is in love with you. Yeah. You got to marry this man. They had a kind of a strange origin story. Totally. Right? She was like, I never thought of him that way ever. Right. And I, <laughs> I, I guess you could, you could presume that they just, she still doesn't think about him. Exactly. That way. And then she was like, he got kicked out of his apartment because he was throwing too many parties, which she framed as if that was like charming. And I was like, that's like insane. Yeah. <laughs> he was throwing too many parties. Yeah. That's like Aaron saying her husband, when she looked behind the floorboards, when he was banging her from behind that she saw a bunch of thongs, thongs. on his floor. He it's like shrugged. really like what? Six thongs, just like this thong wasteland that you saw and you go, cool. This guy was really getting it so in. So fun. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, you're right. That, instead of actually talking about wealth, which they still do, sex bragging is the next level. And I never yeah. even thought about that. I'm like, that put isn't... your money where your mouth is like Sonia. Yeah. When we, when <laughs> I, I like, believe Sonia, when, when we she see says... Sonia just pressed up against a truck and Billy Richard <laughs> is like going to town on her, you're like, you know that they had sex th- together. Sonia. Sonia's the good, the bad, and the ugly of being sexually active where yes. you're like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. If you're going to brag about sex, be like Sonia. <laughs> I'm like, that's the real tea on yeah. having sex five times a week. Well, yeah. Um, so do you like, I mean, do you want to get to, you know, Jessel's I mean, the lingerie like the is like, so, we need to talk about this. So first, okay, so the lingerie is sort of like, I'll say draped, like lingerie throughout the episode. <laughs> they talk about it in the car. They go, yeah. we should get you some lingerie to spice right. up your husband so you're not just giving him blowies every... And she's every... like, that could be good. And then they <laughs> get to the house and Jenna, Jenna goes, hey, yeah, I got the lingerie for all of you guys. Either, did she did she buy it and pick that out or did production just it's say... It's weird. Hey, we're... Hey, this she's like, part- I actually happen to have brought an item for everyone. So there's no way that Jenna actually picked out lingerie. I mean, I don't know, but then she got so offended by right. it. Right. But then why did they t- say in the car, we're going to get lingerie for you to spice up your sex life. Then Jenna happened to have it. And then she gets offended when right. Jessel and Uba all complain about their right. lingerie. Right. It was, it's it was very weird. Uh, there's something fishy going right. on there. So um, let's just assume that Jenna... Uh, decided that it would be a good idea Fun. to the way that like Aaron provided pajamas, but that's like she hosted right. and like, that's just, that's different than just Jenna bringing lingerie. It would make more sense if she 
had a lingerie line or something yeah. and then she like brought it for everyone but i think it was just random and she just picked it out which okay so first of all jenna Lyons is like a style maven mm-hmm. so you i guess would take to heart except that they don't know each other so she could only pick out to the best of her ability without really knowing you right what your vibe is or whatever. Right. She got Jessel's vibe down but, to a science. <laughs> I mean, to Jessel's credit, I'm not being a bitch. It just, she also like styled it poorly. If I'm being specific, she probably could have worn a bra underneath. I think she could have, sti- well, she could have jazzed it up to make it work. Well, I've never, I've never seen someone more uncomfortable in clothing in <laughs> my had, life. Like, her she, shoulders she, down. <laughs> she was like stomping around. Like, like, the, she, like the clothes like physically didn't want to be on her. Yeah, and they were like rebelling it weighed like her, 10 pounds. She's stomping around. She looks so miserable in this thing. I, I yeah. think that she is so um, embarrassed to be captured on film wearing this thing. Which, like, like why reason, did she put it on? Did they like force her to put it, it on? It hit her like nothing in the world that she had to wear this, she thinks, ugly lingerie. <laughs> and she's screaming about she it. She said it was Grinch vibes. Yes. And, it, and she talks for four <laughs> minutes. And the episode was called Oh Christmas Tree. And I was like, what the hell? That was hell? confusing. Not, I was like, uh, it's not Christmas. She's, just because she says she looks like a Christmas tree. Right. Which that is not Which warrant. it's like emerald. It's yeah. like a more like a teal. Yeah. So and Uba makes fun of hers. I think Sai <laughs> even tries to make fun of hers for a second. Yeah. Uh, Aaron likes her. She's fine with it or whatever. And then yeah, Jessel has a meltdown, yeah. which was actually, I think, even though I hated it and I thought it was so lame. It was entertaining. It came out of nowhere. It was actually the most entertaining moment right. because if Jenna actually did pick out that lingerie, I could imagine her being extremely Totally. Offended. I mean, first of all, she was pissed off that it was a large. It was like, okay, like, whatever. Yeah. I, like, she, goes, she was like, I would prefer an extra small. And I'm it, like, well... Yeah, I'm sure you would. And she goes, did Jenna, even Don't look, we all? Did, she, did, did Jenna even look at my Instagram and see how comfortable I am with my naked skin and the earth tones I wear? It's like, no, she didn't. Obviously not. She's trudging around. She goes, this is hideous. I would never wear this. And this then- is hideous. She's like, I hate this. Does anybody else hate their lingerie? I hate this so much. Jenna, this lingerie sucks. Uba saying it too. Yeah. <laughs> and then Uba's like, I take it back. I love it. Like, whatever. Oh, Uba says it. Yeah, yeah, yeah Uba yeah. comes out and she's like proud in it finally. Yeah. Or, or she realizes it's not the time to complain. Right. She realizes. And I'm like, okay, so first of all, if Jessel hated it so much, why wouldn't you put it on, look in the mirror and be like, whoo, I hate that. Not going down in that. Because she was cool. Not and- everyone else not everyone was wearing theirs. So she could have just been like, eh, I'm not going to wear that in front of you guys. Don't well, want to. Yeah, Jenna wasn't. Jenna wasn't. And then I think someone else had ended up changing into like real pajamas. Oh, okay. Anyways. But Cy wore hers. Aaron wore hers for a second. Maybe then Aaron changed. I, I yeah. don't remember. But um, it's like, okay, you could have just swapped out of it. So obviously you like wanted to make a stink about it. Yeah. Um, and then, but yeah, uh, Cy, first Aaron says, uh, in her confessional, um, she's being like so fucking rude and she doesn't realize it, which is weird. Um, so yeah, it's like if someone gives you a gift, you obviously don't say that yeah. in front of them. And then Sai says in her confessional that Jenna doesn't have the balls to call her yeah. out. And she said that she would be like, fuck you, give it yeah. back then or whatever. So, so Sai's like, actually, fuck Jenna even more. I'm going <laughs> to complain about more stuff. And also she should, she should Why totally Why didn't anyone tell else say... Why are you saying no that? No one will. Aaron had a hundred opportunities this episode to push back on these complaining people in her home. Right. Jenna has had two opportunities. They were ruining her clothes last week. Yeah. Literally in front of her. Yeah. And this week they're insulting her clothes. They're treating her like shit. Is it because they don't know each other yes. well enough yet? Yes. You think? Yeah. Totally. Jenna is just like, I'm not... First of all, she's probably not confrontational, except yeah. in business when she probably screams <laughs> like like at anything that yeah. her... Sub- uh, she's like always be sub- closing subordinates do yeah she's probably a complete <laughs> tyrant to her staff but she doesn't feel comfortable talking about this also to to unfortunately add a uh, some doubt in here or talk about production what if jessel didn't thought these were from production because they talked about lingerie and right. jenna didn't actually get these right. or, or something you know i mean yeah i i want to assume that jenna did buy these and purchase yeah. them but also if jessel just didn't know she thought that i don't know that was a production element to the shoot or something maybe that's why she was complaining but regardless she complained more than i've ever heard anyone (laughs) complain about yeah i was thinking to myself because i am also anti 
confrontational. Um, but I'm like, I'm pretty sure in that instance, I would feel outraged enough to be like, fuck you. Yeah. I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> I am not confrontational at all. But like, if I was in Aaron's position, even <laughs> I would be able to say, can you please cool it on the food? Let's not talk about food again. Yeah. Please just, you know, eat this or, yeah. or get yourself your own food. I would have been like, <laughs> she sort of did it, but not. Yeah. For ar- about the food, I would have been like, fine, you can host me at your Hamptons house then. Oh, guess what? You don't fucking have one. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. Well, maybe we should write Aaron for if there's a season two Yeah, we two should write her. And then for Jenna, I would have been like, all right, you fucking, I thought you had big Grinch energy. Grinch is dope. Fuck you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Jenna could have, well, she probably, maybe she will, but she could have totally turned that around and say, you know, that's the most expensive one or I thought right. you'd love it or whatever. Yeah. But or just, just like made her feel really bad and be like, wow, I put a lot of thought and care into choosing those. Totally. Um, I'm sorry that you hate it so much. I will go kill myself. Totally. <laughs> they think Jenna is a, a it, they think they're, they're split. They think Jenna is the coolest one that everybody's going to love. And yeah. she is also, also the most successful, but they also think she's an easy target yeah. for them to, uh, you know, go off on. And so they're trying to figure out which road they should probably take should we all go in on (laughs) jenna and start to make fun of her and tell her she's like lame and awkward right or should we have reverence for her because the audience is going to love jenna and we're going to look like villains yeah um yeah they sort of i feel like yeah there was no real movement made on so she had another Jenna had another heart to heart moment. She had the one about her mom and then she opened up about getting outed yes. by the New York post, which I started to sit up in my seat a little bit. Me I was too. like, Ooh, this is interesting. Me. This is what I wanted to hear about. Yes. Um, because I remember this like, uh, pre, uh, that scandal, like shortly, I don't know the timeline, but when she was at her, pe- this happened like at her peak, like okay. she was on Oprah while she was still with her husband. And I think she lived in like Brooklyn in like a brownstone. Um, and they were talking about her empire and all this stuff. Um, and like shortly, cause I remember when the scandal happened being like, I just saw her on Oprah and everything seemed great. And then it like yeah. her life like was in crumbles. So that was like a big like gossip yes. headline. And I feel like no one was very like, the conversation kind of fizzled. Yeah. They were just like, okay. And seeing, they were like, Oh, it, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. It did. It did fizzle out. They didn't really, they didn't really uh, harp on it anymore or talk about it, or it didn't lead to a more deeper conversation. It was sort of the last conversation at the table. And then I think everybody went up and got, to, went to the bathroom. Right. <laughs> right. Didn't they? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, also, um, I did, think it was funny that during the conversation about her being gay everyone was eating oysters oh wow <laughs> what did you think uh i'm sorry what it was did you... giving cunnilingus energy oh so when like they just like kept cutting to people eating oysters while she was talking about like lesbian sex do you think the editors were purposefully juxtaposing those two I do. scenes wow that's interesting wow, I, didn't, I didn't notice that at all and then it was revealed that no one at the table knows who billy jean king is well i didn't know <laughs> You don't? I looked it. I looked it up. She. She's uh, famous. I, I'm sorry. I <laughs> I felt like sigh at that goddamn table. I had no idea who Billie Jean King was. I'm, I thought that was another. I feel like it just beca- is becoming more and more clear that Jenna is like not. I was gonna say from another generation, but not that she's that much older, but just like a different world. Yeah. And it's like gonna be very difficult for her to connect with these people. Like I, they need to give her someone. Like Jenna. she needs a new <laughs> friend. Can I, this, can I ask you a hypothetical? Yes. Do you care? An on the spot hypothetical. Do you think <laughs> that a season of old Roni with potentially Leah gone? Yeah. Maybe Ebony stays. And then Jenna and Bren were added to the cast of old Roni. How much better of a season of Roni would that have been? <sighs> I think that could have been fun because Bren provides <laughs> the jealous, youthful, Sonia in her younger yeah. days, fun, charismatic, yeah. that they would all hate yeah. until they, they, they pick her apart her. like uh, Tinsley. Yes, totally. <laughs> Jenna provides the Carol, which we need. I yeah. think that is such an underrated viewpoint, yeah. in, you know, in these franchises. And then I thought Ebony got a raw deal yeah. being on that season. Yeah. She was under Leah's wing, which anyone under Leah's wing will fucking flounder. I think <laughs> Leah's one of the, the 
worst housewives there's ever been. Okay. So Ebony, I, I would give her another shot. Yeah. I don't think I liked should... Ebony. I feel like she got handed the mantle of yes. the BLM summer taskmaster, totally. Totally. which like shouldn't have been her job. And maybe producers were even like, can you please enlighten our cast on these issues? I feel like and, they definitely did. And Ebony was like, okay, okay. Sh- yeah. Sure. If I you also want me th- to. I think, it was both that they wanted someone to do that and that she was happy to do that because yes. she's yeah. a news woman or well, it was what's like her job? Well, like Love on Southern Charm. She was like, yeah, if, yeah, exactly. if you want me to broach these subjects, I will. And also, I feel these things. So totally. I'm going to tell this cast of mostly white cast members right. wh- how they should be thinking about like these things. Which is like an unfair position. Totally. Um, and like... She didn't get to shine because right. she had a job to do. That's why I'm saying I didn't say fire Ebony. That's why. I, no, I, I know. Get, I'm saying yeah. like I was just talking about this the other day where I liked her. Like she wasn't scared of the other women, yeah. which is hard to find. Yes. She, you know, was great at leveling with them, yes. you know. Um, but yeah, she got, oh. I think, harped yeah. down by like the election of it all. Yes. And it was just kind of like a slog. Well, I think one season also is just not enough time if someone is not is not truly awful. Like Diana Jenkins, I was like, one season, oh she God. should have been fired halfway through. Totally. Like, get her off our yeah, television. Yeah, she's ruining it. But Ebony, there was some... There were some good moments from her. I, she got relegated to a bad season. So keep her. Add Jenna and Bren. Yeah. That cast is smoking. Don't you think? I think it could be good because I feel like... Jenna would be perhaps shaken up by these <laughs> oh, women. Wait, 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 by Luann, <laughs> Sonia, and Ramona? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll say. <laughs> but like, it's hard, but would she be shaken up and lighten up or would yes. she be made uncomfortable and shut down well, like a turtle I in a shell? Ha- I think she could have a similar progression uh, as Carol, where it's like yeah. you start to make legitimate friends with these people that you think are the <laughs> oddest people you've ever met in your life. She would make bonds with, say, Dorinda. She would yeah. really love Dorinda if, if Dorinda yeah. was back. I, I say in this hypothetical, Dorinda is back. Yeah. She'll she'll find nuance and fun in all of the cast members, just like Carol did. And I mean, anyway, I don't want to, I'm like crying because of this <laughs> opportunity could have been so much better than, right. I can't believe that in Daddy Diaries, he woke up one morning and he goes, I had a dream. It was the <laughs> best dream I've ever had in my life. I'm going to completely cancel Roni and recast it and then give, make Roni legacy happen. That's like the worst decision yeah. that's ever happened. Well, it, he said multiple times on Watch What Happens, like, um, I think Candy said on that episode that she, um, maybe she watched the first one. She said that she f- thinks it feels fresh and then there was someone else who says it, t- it seems fresh i think candy said that and someone else fresh said- is the most like overrated buzzword <laughs> of all time like after two seasons is it fresh right like fresh is such a ridiculous connotation someone else was saying i wrote it down on um one of these uh there was watch it was um um who was on oh tamra loves it and she said, I know you hate her. She said it reminds her of Sex in the City. It does? That's oh, what I guess. she said. Yeah, I mean, um, and just like that, she means? I guess. Um, and both, I think both Candy and maybe Tamara too, said something along the lines of, the old one can still exist or something like that. And Andy was like, yes, thank you. Like, he keeps implying that there can still be the old one. And I don't know if he means historically or moving forward well two things first of all what housewife is going to go and watch what happens live and have the <laughs> bravery to say right. to andy's face they don't like the new roni right. no one would ever say that right not, not one not one person because andy would not like you you, you right. just said live on yeah. television that you don't like the new roni <laughs> yeah you're giving fodder he would to shut the, down immediately yeah and then second um, he may not, they might not have a choice. The ratings for new Roni were horrendous. The, well, he posted a, a real twist. Did you see that? Yes. It was he the said, most caveated statistics <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. They mean nothing. <laughs> it was like the sec- highest Sunday night on Bravo this year. Second highest. It was second. I highest. think it was second. <laughs> high. I was like, how many caveats in this? Stat Which didn't you, you say that Atlanta has not been doing well this year? 
Didn't you say that? Yeah, Atlanta's doing okay. I mean, I think it's still. Well, it's usually rated. the highest rated show on the network. Yes, yeah, it's, it's in its like point eight era. Like uh-huh. so, that's eight hundred thousand. Yeah. So under a, a million, anything over a million is generally good, especially with like streaming n- numbers and everything. Yeah. Um. So Ron Roni first episode had point seven, so seven hundred thousand, uh-huh. I think, and the the second episode had. 500,000. So uh-huh. a, somebody said a 24% drop. That is the highest drop ever in a Rony history between episodes. Yeah. There's never been a drop like that. So that means people who I thought it was an okay episode. Yeah. That means a lot of people said, no more for me. Yeah. And then if that is the second episode, people are going to drop off even higher. That That's the worst trajectory to have. Yikes. So anyway, I also be like, think it's kind of weird that it's on Sunday. I know. Don't you think? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I find it very... I think it should be on like there's, Thursday. There's way too much on Sunday. Now that we're, we're live stacked. watchers, it's it's Atlanta, <laughs> New York, and Crappy Lake. Yeah. Wait, uh, I feel like New York is like a weeknight show. Yeah, totally. Like, for some reason, like Atlanta feels... I feel like Atlanta's been on Sunday for a while. I never watched live in my yeah. whole era of you I could know, be wrong, but Bravo and everything has been the last like three years when it was all just like Peacock or Hulu. Yeah. So I, I have no sense of their yeah, right. live schedule. So I don't know. I feel like Roni should be on like, because OC is on Wednesdays, Do you right? think it should be on like Mondays and people will be like, oh man, work was so awful. So this is mildly <laughs> more enjoyable than work. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, wait, so you didn't you didn't think this episode was as bad as I did? I mean, there are like so many little things to pick apart yes. that I want to know more about. Like Jenna. I want to see if Jenna's gonna wake up. I wanna see I wanna know more about Jessel's even though I think Jessel's extremely boring, She's quite the honestly. Link. But I think that there's gonna be some there there about her marriage and I wrote down so it was Candy and Aaron on Watch Happens Live they talked about um, Andy asked Aaron about the Jessel not having sex whatever and then like I said Candy like didn't watch the episode so they go Candy they found out on this episode that another housewife hadn't had sex in two years and Candy's like what because wow. we know Candy's not I don't think Candy's full of shit about her sex life that's very important to her yeah so that's like her identity yeah. Candy coated nights. Yes. Um, but Candy goes, well, her immediate response without any other information is, well, like, are they allowed to fuck other people? <laughs> right. <laughs> and there, the crowd was like, oh, my God. And she was well, like, well, she was like, somebody's fucking him. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I, and I was like, that's hilarious. Like, she just like didn't watch the show. But yeah. given that one bare fact, yeah, out, she's out like of somebody else, like they're fucking other people then. Yeah, totally. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I mean, I think that's a natural reaction to hearing that someone hasn't had sex in yeah, what, two years. And yeah. then there's, it kind of felt like the vibe is that maybe the, that conversation is to come. All right. More sex talk from Jessel. Thank God. I can't wait for <laughs> episode three. What a thrill. Woo! Also, so, um, yeah. this is more on the Atlanta conversation, but Bolo comes up. Yeah. Uh, the huge dick stripper from a couple of seasons course. ago. Yeah. And, uh, cause I guess Candy's the one that knows Bolo. She's the one that hired him. And Andy asked about Bolo and she goes, actually, um, <laughs> he's on a show with Eva. What show? I Bolo need to look and it Eva? up. <laughs> and Andy was like, you're kidding me. She was like, yeah, he's pursuing an acting career. <laughs> and Andy goes, can he act? She goes, yeah. Eva, I actually liked in UGT season two. Yeah. I, I didn't. Her stoner era. Yeah. I did not enjoy her in Atlanta. I felt like she was a, a bit of a snooze. Yeah. But her in small doses was fun around that group. Yeah. I, uh, anyway, uh, that's that's interesting. So I'm excited to that see was Bolo. Funny. That's fun. Yeah. Very fun. Um, Does that. Well, we're not doing Atlanta yet, right? No. But that was. Um, and the last thing I'll say about that is that the caviar woman was the bartender. <laughs> really? Yeah. The chips. The potato chips and caviar person? Yeah. And. And who was on? Candy and Aaron? Yeah. Did Aaron say, this is it? Um, I love this. Andy was uh, saying that it was all delicious. And Candy said, I love Pringles. Oh, perfect. <laughs> all right. Watch What Happens Live was good then. It was fun. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I It's all very TBD still. I don't know how long it's going to take to get its groove. Um, I feel like it 
partially got botched because of the casting switch up. Mm-hmm. Like the timeline is weird. Yes. But um, that could have potentially been saved if the cast members were <laughs> engaging and fun to right. watch. Um, and then I agree with you that it was weird to throw in a trip so early. Yes. For the viewer, even though we don't know what, right. what like, led to it. When they, you know, got, got there and Aaron was like, they're only staying three nights. I don't know what they brought all this stuff for. I was like, three nights. Three nights. Oh my God. A guest. It should be like one night. A guest is like fish. They, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? They start to stink after three <laughs> That's d- days. Three nights is a long time. <laughs> three nights? <laughs> Two nights. I like, like freaked okay. out. I was like, whoa. It should be like 48 hours tops. For sure. That was that was a long. They were like, let's mine as much as we can from this trip. They were probably like, this is like Bluestone Manor point you know, 2.0. This is yeah. going to be great. Let's get him here for a long time. Let's have him like start to get, what's that called? Like when, like when you're in an environment for too long, you get sort of like, what's that called? Stir crazy. Yeah, stir crazy. <laughs> Let's let them get like it that. It turns into Shutter Island. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, I've had enough of like, so Uba's like, I need provisions. I need to sit facing north. I'm going to go in the kitchen. I'm going to steal a can. I'm going to have sex eight times a night. It's giving fake fake kooky a little bit. Yeah. And I'm like, can you just get drunk? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Can you please secretly get her a huge, gigantic uh, beer? But that's what Erin was saying. She was like, thank God she doesn't drink if this is how she acts. But I was like, "Mm." that was just that was just for the audience. I was like, don't get sad that she doesn't drink. She's just as wild if she did. And it's like. Also, did you notice that Jessel ordered a espresso martini with tequila? No. That sounds disgusting. Yeah, she doesn't know what the hell she's doing. I screamed. I was like, "What?" Because <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, who was it? Um, Aaron. I think ordered a gin martini, and Sai ordered a vodka martini, okay. and then. Jessel was like, I'll have an espresso martini with tequila. And I was like, excuse me? Yeah, that's that, that's wild order. I would never... A tequila martini, first of all? Yes. I don't sounds... think... Sounds... What? Yeah, I don't think those would go good, but, you know, and who And then knows? espresso I mean, is like... Espresso martini, they're kind of like creamy. Right. Well, it's Jessel's world and we're all living <laughs> in it, right? I am confused. And then, yeah, Sober Sally's over on the other side. I'm just... Afraid that nothing's ever going to happen, but maybe Bryn will bring the funk. Yeah, yes. I mean, Bryn will. It already the previews already were more entertaining than forty-one minutes of this show, but I don't think it's re- sustainable for one cast member right. to provide all of the fun. So, right. Well, maybe she'll jolt everyone else into oh. something. <laughs> They'll wake up. Yeah, yeah. possibly. Well, do you want to switch over to? Something that I actually found to be beautiful and profound. Yeah. Real Housewives of Orange County. Yes. Do you care? You want me to say my thoughts first? So I don't, I don't know. Or do you want to say your thoughts first? Just generally. Yeah. Is this backyard bikini clash? This is backyard (laughs) bikini clash. And I was so, you know, (laughs) surprised how much I really liked this episode overall. There's action. Really fun. Overall. The fun vibe was like almost to a 10. Yeah. A couple flop moments. Gina. <laughs> yeah. Some, you know, low, low key Heather moments or yeah. whatever, but she was few and far between. But overall, this was a fun, action packed. Yeah. And I know episode. you specifically like how it started. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I mean, how did, how did you feel just before we start getting into yeah. it? How did you like, did you, because we've been sort of like OCs. It's like a six out of 10. Yeah. It's like not, not horrible. It's not great. No, yeah, it had a lot going for it. the The beginning was fun. Um, that whole um, pool party was fun, and like we had like a new, like villain maybe question mark character come in. Yeah, um, well, she seemed pretty nice. Well, I just mean like <laughs> yeah, right. a bringer right. of drama. Right, right. And then the end Whoa, was yeah. crazy. Yeah, so good. So, okay, so we both we both <laughs> liked this. I mean, I, I liked it a lot more than the last four episodes. Yeah. So it starts out, and you could not have AI generated a better scene for me in Orange County history. It was Emily and Shane 
getting waxed. They're com- specifically their noses. Yeah, right. <laughs> and and their um their banter is at an all time high. They're being so fun with each other. Shane is like hit, the spotlight is on him, and he is not <laughs> letting it go. Like uh, he he's getting his nose hair. He's getting his ass completely waxed. He goes, "Can I get some of that ass hair on my head?" Do <laughs> yeah. you remember when he said that? <laughs> yeah. And then uh, he goes. What else did he say? He was like, Emily, you do your nose or whatever, but can you also get your ass? <laughs> yeah. Wax? And she goes, he's an ass man. He was like, I don't like hairy butts though. Yeah. And they're telling this wax artist all of this stuff about his sexual, um, <laughs> what's that called? Proclivities. Yeah. And then they do a montage of him spanking her ass and requesting anal sex. Yeah. And we've commented on this. We didn't even know <laughs> that ultimately there was going to be a montage. We've cataloged every single time he smacked yeah. Emily's ass and we got the full retrospective yeah. seven times she said he <laughs> takes photos of her ass yeah he eats her ass what else did he say she, he smacks it yeah he looks at it through a telescope <laughs> yeah. right yeah she later in the episode says they do sex tapes yes I, it was like it was so it, that was I was like god damn are the do the producers know that <laughs> Emily and Shane are like providing the most joy they, they, they made so many sex tapes and she said <laughs> Emily he she goes Shane's a goddamn freak and we yeah. watched the sex tapes yeah that was wasn't that yeah. awesome <laughs> she let it all hang out yeah that was so cool I mean Emily is coming for the crown of the OC and she deserves it totally I think, in my opinion yeah she was on watch what happens after oh. and she looks great okay so sometimes watch what happens live appearances dispel my love for them because if they're not good off the cuff or they do something yeah. lame no, she, she was did, great. She was? Yeah. Emily adhered to the persona that I know and love? No, she's super fun. And Andy actually, because, you know, Andy always makes the women be honest about what they've had done. Um, and he made sure to uh, ask her about Ozempic because he's on a tirade. He's always asking everyone about yeah. Ozempic. Um, but she confirmed, which we already talked about because she talked about it on, like, Jeff Lewis's podcast that she got lipo and a breast reduction and she he was like what about ozempic and she was like she said she only did ozempic for six weeks to jump start her weight loss journey um i would still classify that as well, being yeah. on ozempic right? sure um but uh he was like because i think he felt bad that this whole ozempic season of the past year he keeps complimenting the women on looking great and i think he got shit for making it uh you know, complimenting weight loss, uh-huh. you know, yeah, when they right. should feel fine to look how they looked before or whatever. So he made it very clear that um, he loved thick Emily. He said that? Well, no. He said, I loved, I thought you were beautiful before oh, and okay. that's the Emily I fell in love with. Oh, okay. So he was basically saying right. like, don't ever change. And she was like, I love that Emily too. She was hot, but I guess she's obsessed with fitness now. Yeah. And she also, this is the sad part, said she barely drinks anymore emily said that yeah because gina also doesn't drink i know okay well (laughs) i don't know i mean emily is i'd say a rare cast member to where i think they provide a lot of fun and enjoyment and are funny inherently to where yeah i did like when she got drunk as hell and screamed at kelly when (laughs) kelly called shane a little dork yeah which was awful of kelly she is not a dork (laughs) at all he's cool he's so cool that's one of my favorite moments no yeah emily's personality shines through like she doesn't require alcohol but it does concern me yeah Tamara, this comes up on this episode again where I'm like, how many times can you apologize for getting too drunk until you like have an actual problem? Yeah. And also, I don't believe that she's blackout <laughs> drunk and doesn't remember. Yeah, I totally believe it. that she remembers she threw a napkin in her face. She even had a one liner like already for the right. napkin throw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, do you want to general or, or go through these scenes? How, how do you feel? Sure. I mean, we're, we're, we're sort of, you know, you and I are cooking with gasoline <laughs> and we're, we're, we're already one hour and 42 minutes. I don't, yeah. Should we be general? Cause we have to go to crappy and uh, sure. Yeah. We can do like highlights. So there was quickly the Shane stuff at the beginning. There was kind of an uneventful Balboa Island moment. Although Jen revealed that Taylor calls Jen big daddy, which I really liked <laughs> and she has no reason for it. Yeah. <laughs> that was cute. Um, have you been to Balboa Island? I- I've been to, um, I, haven't, I don't think I've been to the island. I've been in Newport Beach okay. and like gotten um, like the banana stand yeah. there, like chocolate covered bananas or whatever. But yeah. I don't think I've taken the 
Australia. It's super cute. Okay. It's fun. All right, cool. Um, I went last summer. Yeah, not a lot happened there. Um, except Kennedy was there, and it's crazy that we've known her so long. I know. She was four Ugh. when she was given that birthday party that she'll never remember. Ugh, that was like... one of the most depressing scenes in Housewife history. Yeah, that was... She's been through so much, that poor gal. Yeah, I mean, think think about it. I mean, she probably can't watch Beverly Hills at all. No. Yeah, it's dark. Um, and then Gina meets up with her ex and his new girlfriend. It's boring. And then... Um, boring, right? You said? Totally boring. But I wrote down, didn't she say before that her ex's new girlfriend looks like Kelly Dodd? Did didn't that she? happen? Because yes, she, she looks exactly like Kelly yeah, Dodd. It was... I, for a second, when I looked up, I was like taking a note or something. I looked up, I was like, God, dang it, wait, <laughs> Kelly's back for a second? <laughs> yeah, I she, just wrote down, looks like Kelly Dodd. <laughs> yeah, she really looks like her. Um, but I her, feel like that maybe came up at one point. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think you're right, because she does. She looks remarkably like yeah. Kelly Dodd. Uh, I think... Matt seemed like a total dickhead. Yeah. Like he was just like bad energy. He's like, I'm hungry. Uh, is anybody <laughs> going to cook me food? He throws the ball at his kid and he goes, oh, God damn, you missed the ball, dude, or whatever. I was like, this guy sucks. And the, yeah. the difference between him and Travis is so apparent. She went from like a, a jock frat boy dickhead mm-hmm. type to Travis, who's like the like a, such a sweet, loving yeah. guy. I was like, damn, Matt looks like so shitty. Right. Me. Yeah. That was, Yeah boring <laughs> totally boring i was like almost both gina scenes you could have just erased i sort of liked the later gina scene with travis yeah. where they got a little sweet but yeah gina gina is kryptonite for the entertainment of a show yeah when she's even in the mix of drama you don't want her opinion because she falsely ra- ratchets up the drama yeah and then her alone scenes you just do not want they're boring no gina no. I, I i really i have to wonder how gina has left. i think she's on four seasons now I know. I feel like for some reason they are holding on to her and Emily being a package deal. And like, I, they're not even like BFF. They're, like, they're really cares? not. And, and, and two seasons ago, uh, Gina fully wrote off Emily for drama and like yeah. tried to like fully throw her to the wolves and then had yeah. to like come crawling back. I yeah. think when the response was bad, G- G- and I think they liked obviously her marital struggle, but that's over. She's with Travis. That's not happening again. I not, do not, not need to see her real estate journey move oh forward. That'd be so no. boring. So I just, I like her, the merit of her. I just, I mean, no offense, Gina. I, I know you listen to turtle time, so I'm sorry <laughs> to go so in on you, but this, it's just not the proper outlet for your, for you. I, right. I don't think in my opinion. I know. Yeah. I love Emily. I'm glad that Emily has gone on to form other relationships because she's much more fun to watch with like everyone else which for sure in this next scene they go to like a dive bar called the swallows Inn. there's some great which was fun there's some great locations in yes. this episode i loved mozambique i love yeah. swallows Inn. i was like I, i've never seen this felt like a fish out of water like, i don't know why they vibe. went there i thought they went there for something specific you like think, i thought they were gonna go line dancing or something Ra- ryan's vibe now cowboy oh, maybe. Ryan. he was yeah. just like hey you got to go to the swallows Inn." yeah i couldn't understand why they were there because I mean, it was just to be together yeah and they, they were drinking champagne at this dive bar which is funny because that's something i would do i mean i did want to go to swallows Inn though totally I thought, like, that was that was cool yeah um but then just they the only um the only purpose of the scene was to <laughs> Talk about the Shannon, like, there's something going on with Shannon and John's relationship. And Tamara says that Heather <laughs> is being awful by spreading this gossip. She goes, she's Heather doesn't give a up. shit. Yeah, she goes, Heather doesn't give a shit about Shannon in any way. So she's just spreading rumors, which we haven't seen Heather right. say anything about yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this Shannon and John relationship. So Tamara has a full-blown one-sided, just <laughs> fully... Uh, dramatic arc that she wants to you know falsely yeah. push out into the world i She's, like that emily was like please don't throw me under the bus if you move forward with this. yeah uh, Tamara just lays out her plan very specifically which i thought was really unique where I, you don't normally know how like shitty and devious and disloyal uh tamara is being i felt like she sort of she got um she lost her skill a little bit in this scene she clearly says what she's going to do yeah i think that heather has bad intentions for telling these secrets about shannon which is not true right heather is a good person yeah heather is not spreading slanderous gossip yeah to, to shannon's detriment so it's already fake a yeah. false accusation then she goes if heather's telling people I, I forget what else she said she's not coming from a place of concern yeah. so i'm going to tell shannon immediately what heather is saying it's just like right. i've never seen it's so um like 
so, so put in such a right. neat bow of I how love, Tamara is going to act. I love that everyone coming after Heather has made you have to defend Heather, who you don't even like. I know. Well, <laughs> I, yeah, but I, I will stick up for the underdog. And, and yeah. I think it's a full fake narrative that they're pushing on Heather. Right. Condescending, which, you know, whatever. You can say it, but she is. But you can't say that Heather doesn't legitimately care about people and isn't trying to be a good friend to people. She's forgiven a lot from Shannon and from Tamara. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, I, I don't sense any ulterior motives from Heather at all. So I got to give her her due. Yeah. And I, and you know, I dislike, I dislike how performative Tamara is. Right. And I felt like the scene was a very good representation of how Tamara acts. Totally. Yeah. Um, and then, um, I mean, there's some bullshit, but well, most... well what, one thing to know, cause I think it, so Jen and Ryan's relationship, oh I am now fully like conspiracy theory. Every, I was, I was so, I was one of those people do not pry into their relationship. I'm fine with Jen and Ryan. The things we're learning about Ryan are like, I think someone already memed this or whatever, but it's giving mini Louie <laughs> vibes. Like yeah. a little Louie in training with not so much financial, like yeah. shady shit, but just a bad guy i mean we found out this episode that well first of all he calls um uh jen unprompted and goes hey honey just checking in how beautiful you are to make sure that you're still as beautiful and a magical creature <laughs> as you were when i left off which is like okay man yeah yeah that's the call that you definitely always make to your significant yeah. other when you're not on camera and then he goes hey and also just so you know do you have all of your friends numbers because i'm gonna uh -huh. blast out a huge new dick pic to all of them it's like oh it's not funny. It's like, dick, it's not funny that no. you blasted out a dick pic potentially to your children and your <laughs> wife's or your your girlfriend's very good friend. It's yeah, not, it's not. No, right. it's not funny. Um, on Watch What Happens Live, they talk about him, and Emily just straight up says that he's a douchebag. Oh, damn! She was just like, he's a douchebag. Emily said that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I was wrong about Ryan. Now that the the spotlight is on him, he is showing his horrible personality his horrible humor the fact that he thinks his dick pic thing is funny and he's trying to run with it with merch is awful that oh and then we learned that 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 break was a total ryan constructed break right. that they had Jen yeah. was like I, I didn't know what the boundaries of this break were, were, were. She, she goes i was so hurt when he went and slept with someone we yeah. were officially on she a was break. like don't act like i'm not upset about it i'm just accepting it so you officially you officially could say that Tamara and everyone is justified because Ryan did cheat on Jen. Right. Technically. She didn't say, let's take some time off and, you know, right. have sex with other people. Yeah. She's just, the she's, conversation does seem to be morphing into everyone being like, why don't you care? Yes. Like, why are you letting him do this? Yes. Um, and so this is like kind of jumping ahead, but the storyline starts, she starts to say that Heather, I mean, is doing all of this because she was in love with Ryan right. and that she was pissed that he went with her. And on Watch What Happens Live, Tamara said that Heather has a type and without going into detail said that that type is usually an NBA player or NFL player. Got it. Copy, <laughs> copy that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then um, she said that Jen was afraid when that infidelity happened. Um, that happened around the time when she was getting cast on the show. This is what Tamara said, so take it with a grain of salt. But she said that Jen was afraid that she wouldn't get cast if she broke up with Ryan because that relationship would be off the table storyline-wise. Tamara said that? Yes. Oh. Yeah. That's it's kind I of mean, interesting. That is interesting. I mean, it's I hate <laughs> I hate knowing the like mechanics of reality television and that it's sort of, you know, right. suspends disbelief, but that's funny that she would just let this horrific human who cheated on her. And yeah. Sends it's like, dick they're still to together. Her. So, um, and then the last thing I'll say about this back and forth is that, um, uh, I guess, uh, Jen went to law school for one year, but she dropped out and that Jen said that Emily, uh, didn't go to real law school because apparently where Emily went to law school, lost its accreditation. <laughs> Jen said that about Emily? Yeah. When? Um, Tamara said that she said that oh. on Watch What Happens Live. Wow. And then Emily's like, it was accredited when I went there. They lost it recently. <laughs> you still are accredited if it was accredited at the time. That's, that's I know, ridiculous. but that's still so embarrassing. Wait, so Jen, presumably Jen hates Emily, right? I guess. Damn. All right, well, I'm looking forward more to More to that. come, more to come. So then are we in the, we're in the pool party era, yes. right? Slip and slide. Yeah. Fun. Champagne gun. 
vibes. Yes. I love that Emily was like, can I borrow Shane's mom's house to host a party? I mean, that house friend? is sick. <laughs> it's awesome. Perry's yeah. house. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. Um, I liked that um, uh, when Tamara and Heather Amin walk in together, Heather says to Tamara, Tammy, it's not time to go hammy. I really <laughs> like that. There are a lot of good quotables in this. Also, when... Emily arrives with her friend who apparently like everyone thinks she has like a, you know, an amazing body. Oh, right. she, uh, Taylor goes, how the hell are you friends <laughs> with this person? And Emily says something just off the cuff. She goes, when you have a f- hot friend like this, it just shows how confident you are. I was like, God damn, what a great response and thing <laughs> yeah. to say. I never heard that before. That was like, I love that. that was kind of fun. Yeah. Um, this is, they go into all the sex tape stuff. Heather, uh, says that she could never do that because as an actress, yeah. she would just very, be too self-conscious. Very self-aware commentary. She said, she said, I hate myself even watching me on a sitcom, so I can never <laughs> do sex tape. And she also says, I would probably be looking at the camera. And then she kind of does a funny yeah. look through the camera. She had some comedy. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, Heather. <laughs> this is the perfect, I think, I, I think amount of like Heather I, I need. Yeah. Just, just small doses. She's great, but I don't think she should have the burden of being the number one housewife. Cause right. it makes her seem overrated. Yeah. She's more supporting. Yes. Totally. And it was, do you think that her scuba suit was self-aware a comedy or do you think that's just so if, much how she is that she can't help but be funny? I assumed it was legitimately because she did not <laughs> want this disgusting water to be on her body, but uh, even if it was, it was pretty funny. Yeah, it was very funny. And then Shannon spanks the two of them. Yeah. Shannon's in her like bike short to like full body suit spanks. Yes. Yes. It's like the least flattering thing ever. And the two of them, when everyone else is like spray tanned, six pack, like bikini babes. And then the two of them are just like a disaster. It was yeah. very funny. Yeah, it, it was so funny. Um, Emily says that, that Heather's dressed up like a whale trainer at SeaWorld, <laughs> which was absolutely accurate. Yeah, completely. I just love she's so um, uptight, which honestly is so smart, though, because I the balls it takes to do a fucking slip and slide in your 40s on TV, I can't imagine. Why? What? 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 I mean, I would never fucking do that. Why? Oh, is it like for, for pain? pain? Well, just... Wait, I'm going to be 40 in three years. I can't go <laughs> on slip and You can do anymore. it. It's just, first of all, like your tits are guaranteed to pop out, first of all. But obviously, like Tamara flashes the camera like every week and, anyways. And Emily. Yeah, Did they don't see? give a shit. Um, but like your tits are definitely going to pop out. Like it's okay. not going to be flattering, even though I thought they all actually look great, but I'm just saying it takes a bold woman to okay. a bold feel woman. Okay. confident enough to do Sorry, that. Sorry. I thought you meant anybody over 40. <laughs> okay. You're, you're saying tits flopping. Well, whatever. I just mean, I would be like terrified about, about what the footage looks like. So Heather probably thought about that and was like, fuck that. I'm wearing a wetsuit. Yeah, so Heather calculated right. I mean, it was fun. Uh, Emily, when she did her slip and slide, her first one, they, they slow it down. She biffed her face so oh my hard. God, I was afraid she, she was going to like knock her teeth and out. And she was just like, don't talk about it. Yeah, I'm she not didn't hurt. care. Yeah, I mean, that was good. I mean, I wouldn't want to That could have like, been pain. bad. Yeah, that, it was so bad. She like flopped right in her face. She um, could have ended up like Max on Vanderpump with all his teeth out. Totally. Or Sheena. Yeah. So, but in the, in the midst of this like kind of fun champagne gun, slip and slide, their self tanner or whatever, yeah. all on the slip and slide thing. Heather's wearing a wetsuit basically. Then there's this Heather Amin and um, Tamra confrontation, which is so awful of Tamra, obviously. Yeah, I can't yeah, say yeah. it enough to just confront <laughs> Jen with her She's ex- like, you may have uh, met her before. <laughs> awful. Awful. I like that Jen said when she's dressed in all black, she goes, I'm dressing in all black. So just bury me. Yeah. She's like, I want to die. She literally can't stand to stay at that party for more than one hour. She's like, all right, my duty is done. I had that conversation. So then they have this much hyped confrontation, which was actually awful. You just, you feel fingerprints of a producer or Tamara all over it. I also, my, my least favorite trope of all time is when three people are having a confrontation that is about them. And then all the housewives get (laughs) nervous that there's no screen time for them. Instead of just like, doing a champagne gun shotgun or keep yeah. slip and sliding they just they feel like they're not going <laughs> to get 10 minutes of screen time you know and they can't be yeah. so then they all 
so shannon was giving drunk though like shannon felt like she like wandered in <laughs> uh, shannon, shannon gets a pass she, you can get one friend who comes over but emily's was actually the yeah. lamest thing i think i've ever seen emily do. Yeah. she was i'm the host of this party so i wanted to make sure you're okay <laughs> as if you don't know that a fight could potentially right. happen well like, they immediately abort once she comes over they're like all right no you, right then emily comes then gina is there because gina's like oh i can't get left out either yeah then taylor comes then it's this <laughs> 10 person group <laughs> huddled around three people having a conversation. They, I thought that was, that, that was like lame as hell. Yeah. And they all leave. They leave it to just Tamara and Jen and Jen just, or sorry, Tamara just yeah. goes, I'm sorry. I blacked out. I feel so bad. I want to end this now. Right. Heather Amin and her conversation was nothing. Right. Heather Amin just goes, Jen, I'm sorry. I just wanted you to know that. I, I don't even know what Heather said. It was right. so boring. Tamara just folds like laundry and says, I'm sorry. I'll never do this again. Right. Tamara go, or Jen goes, did oh. they like actually get to the bottom? So like Heather was saying like, I don't appreciate that. All of this is getting sicked on me as the, you know, bringer of the well, tea or whatever. And then it kept cutting to Tamara being like, Heather told me, Heather told me. So I'm like, are you guys going to have a confrontation yeah. now about how Tamara told everyone that this was all your fault? Blame <laughs> Tamara. Yeah. Basically Jen has a shitty relationship and she is getting all the wrath of the cast members for just having a, sh maintaining a shitty relationship. Right. And Tamara is trying to make herself in the middle of it by saying Ryan told her he wanted to fuck her. When right. He got in the gym. And then Heather is just like, I wasn't the one who told, those stories or whatever, but Tamara was specifically the one who told her. Yeah. And then I, I thought Tamara would try to continue her, her, um, you know, uh, tirade against Jen, but I think she's all set now on Heather and she's like saving all of her wrath for Heather to tell Shannon in the next yeah. scene. So this ends, it like ends yeah. with a dud. Uh, Jen says, I don't think I'll trust Tamara, you know, much longer, which right call. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um, I just wrote down, I don't remember what, um, Emily says to Shane, but his response is, is Shane handsome? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> um, uh, Shane asked, did Tamara take her top off at the slip and slide? And Tamara did. And Emily also did. And um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Emily goes, did it, does a bear shit in the woods? Is the sky blue? And Shane goes, is Shane handsome? And I was like, <laughs> Love every him. moment he's just giving the best. It was so great. Love it. Oh, and then they show a very quick scene of, of, Jen and Ryan at an intuitive healer. And I was like, this episode is already giving me so much fun, like silly yeah. stuff. All of a sudden the healer just goes, which it's okay. Right. I mean, I, I, it's not offensive. Yeah. It's not, I, it's not offensive. Right. It's just a healer. Yeah. She goes, hi. <laughs> and then they pan to Ryan and Jen and they're just closing their eyes, listening to this intuitive. Yeah. Healer. I was like, what wow. are they there for? It gave us no, real context right. it was just it was one of those you know yeah. very uh what like almost b-roll yeah, uh, yeah and but, then it ends with him saying like i wrote in my journal this week and they're like good job and then it's over i could have seen more of that session right? yeah <laughs> i know i need to know more it's giving yeah. jack's reiki healer yeah. uh, jenna scene i don't really think we need to talk about it the only merit of it was that she gets vulnerable and i think legitimately cries thinking about how beautiful her life is with travis yeah she makes him a meal she's talking about how awful her life was she never She's so happy the things that happened to her happened because she, ultimately she wouldn't have made it to this place yeah. in her life. And I'm like, great, Gina, that was a sweet, vulnerable, vulnerable moment. I yeah. like it, but let's let's have fun again. Yeah. Please. Also, did you notice that um, they showed her mentor or whatever, her real estate mentor, and his name is Dave Archuleta. And there's a famous American Idol contestant named David Archuleta. <laughs> I completely I don't know why I watched this episode three times I missed that what his it name was it was like they did a they when she was saying she got approved to take the exam or whatever I think they did like a quick insert of her doing a zoom with her future team or whatever and it wasn't but, him no <laughs> okay it was similar. like an older man yeah do you yeah. think he had to change his name to Dave because maybe was I was like it's funny that they still showed it but I guess it was probably part of their like agreement they put a lot of extraneous gina scenes in this lace throughout like them going yeah. to the meat counter which wasn't funny oh, right the playground like that, this had an unnecessary amount of gina i know i really think that they think she's so much more charming than i find her like they're like it's the long island it's the italian she uses jarred sauce i'm like i don't give a fuck 
I sorry. What did she say? Me, no, me neither. <laughs> I, it, it, it just does. It's yeah. For some reason, there's someone in production that's like, this is all endearing and charming and silly, and it's just it does not read that way at all. The jar. Yeah, I think thing, that they think she's not funny. That it's like the upstairs downstairs. Like she's the American dream of housewives or something where, you know, she lived in the casita and now she's trying to like work her way back. And I'm like, I don't care. I don't care either. I do not care. Yeah. I don't care. (laughs) Then. Okay. Then they're like, okay, sorry. We threw this Gina scene in there or whatever. (laughs) We are giving you. (laughs) Give us what we want. Give us what we want. (laughs) So I already was enticed by this restaurant. I've walked by that on the PCH after going to the beach in Dana point. Uh One time, uh, me, my friend, Rachel and Megan, we were like, let's get a margarita after the beach. We walked by Mozambique and Uh I was like, this place looks awesome awesome it's all um stones uh-huh. and, it, and it has a rooftop it looks so fun they were unfortunately closed okay. so we had to go somewhere else but i was like is that the restaurant that i almost <laughs> got to go to and now that i've seen it i yeah. want to go back there so bad it, it looks, looks great awesome yeah margaritas parrots i love the whole vibe <laughs> no, of the it looks building great yeah and then vicky has already had oh well yeah <laughs> vicky is there yeah and she's has she's already had three shots of tequila <laughs> she's ready to whoop it up she comes in like a wrecking ball yeah you say yep she says that she's spending her time between Newport, Puerto Vallarta, and Cotto. Yeah. She's a new man. Tamara goes, I can never pin you down. You're never in town. And Vicky goes, I have to get away so I don't feel sad. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, Vicky, no. Yeah. She said her son has bought a place in San Diego. I love those quick updates. Yeah. Like, they're just Brianna's like, us in the, Illinois. the Vicky Digest. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Brenna. Yeah. She's been dating a guy for a year. This man. Uh, Vicky. Oh, oh, right. 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 Yeah. Um, who... We'll see. Um, and then uh, there, uh, Shannon comes. She says, uh, what did she say? She's like, she does her thing where she speaks Spanish. She loves to speak Spanish. She goes, loco buen tiempo with tres amigas. Shannon said that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. I don't remember that. <laughs> I love when Shannon speaks Spanish. It's very yeah, funny Yeah, that is me. very fun. Um, but yeah, it was exciting to see them all together again. Um, they start doing a prayer yeah, Vicky, Vicky says, she, Vicky is, you know, on one because, first of all, she wants to appear entertaining on camera, which yes. that's fine. Also, she seemed legitimately excited. They're in a fun environment. They're drinking yes. margaritas. So she prays and she goes, you know, dear Jesus, can please, <laughs> can we whoop it up today? And, and Tamara's like, you're praying to whoop it up to God? And he's like, and she's like, God knows me. He would want me to whoop it up. Or yeah, whatever. she says, Jesus understands who I am. <laughs> yeah. And then they're doing quick cuts of like how much fun they're having. Like they're drinking, they're being silly. It, you do see the camaraderie. I think I've told you before though, but like them, they, they have the worst impulses together sometimes and they can provide some of the worst scenes in OC history when they're being performative and fake and pretending they're drunk and screaming for no reason. So I like it in small doses. I like how they cut this, but I'm still worried potentially when the, if the trace amigas are reunited, if they're going to fall back in those right drunken sort of, um, what's that called? Just, just like, over the top yeah. exchanges with each other. Like we're the party girls. Right. I, I just, you know. Yeah. So I did like, it was interesting when, so Tamara starts to try and open Pandora's box about Heather. V- and, very inorganic. Yeah. And, um, Vicky says, you know, I never really fucked with Heather. Like, yeah. you know, and she made an interesting point that I had never thought about. She said that Vicky feels like Heather looks down on her because she has an insurance company, which is honestly like so funny because I feel like Vicky has such pride for her business. And all she ever talks about is that like she works hard and makes money and whatever. And it's funny that she has self-awareness that someone, not that I agree, right. like she's right. running an empire in right. the Kodo insurance, yes. but that someone could think that that's like tacky or, low grade you know what i mean like that's interesting that she has that whether or not she's actually self-conscious about it she is aware that someone could think that (laughs) i mean mean, knowing heather i can just imagine that heather was you know condescending to vicky and it's not necessarily for insurance empire it's just like i mean is plastic surgeon that much better and then heather's imd you know her acting career i mean a doctor has cachet okay all right. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. To some people, I guess. <laughs> but I just thought that was interesting yeah. where I was like, I never would have thought of that dynamic before. But um, yeah. And then, of course, Tamara, Tamara says, tries to say it without saying it. What, but <laughs> Tamara goes, 
do you consider Heather a friend? And he goes, ah, I don't know, sort of. We had a rough patch. Do you think Heather would ever say anything bad about you? <laughs> do you think that she keeps your secrets? Yes or no? And then Jenny goes, oh, wait, sorry. Are you trying She's... to say that Heather doesn't? And Tamara gives this little sinker face like she knows the secrets. And Vicky's like, oh, you know, what's the what's the tea? Like, you know, I want to know too. We have to know what's going on. And then Shannon. Oh, oh so apparently. All hell breaks loose. Yeah, apparently there is some smoking gun between Shannon and John that Shannon gets up. She's like, is it about what I think it's about? She runs over to Video Village. Yeah, totally. She goes, this can't come out. If what I think is being talked about comes out this season, me and John are done. You can kiss our relationship goodbye. So then it's like, okay, maybe Tamara was validated in bringing this up right now. However, she got to this point. I guess it is worthwhile that we have to know what this John and... uh, uh, Shannon drama is yeah. so I don't know it's it, it was very sloppily handled but yeah. ultimately we get a fourth wall break because there's some explosive thing what, yeah. what could this what could this I be no do you think it's that like he cheated but she wouldn't allow that and why would this why would this why would that that would ruin their their relationship once it was found out that right. Shannon like forgave him for cheating right I, I don't do it's you, weird do you think it was a little bit of a contrived fourth wall break Shannon doesn't seem that like Right. That she would go to that. Well, uh, on Watch What Happens, Andy says that um, that she does that multiple more times oh, this really? season. <laughs> wow. wow. Okay. Um, All right, maybe Shannon does just break the fourth wall all the time. But they also, um, Tamara, uh, he kind of asks, like, what that was about. And I couldn't tell if she was using discretion or if there's not that much there. But she sort of never said what it was. Okay. It almost seemed like maybe there wasn't anything really there. Or she says something about that. They never really found out or something so, like yeah, that. Wow. So Shannon just like did all of that and like stops production basically for a rumor that doesn't right. even really have any effect on them. Well, we weird, know that, but they, obviously they broke up. Yeah, yeah they broke up. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they asked Emily um, if she was surprised. It was like a game of like on a scale of one to 10 or one to five or whatever. And, Emily was like negative a million surprised. Like we all knew they were oh, going to break up. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Wow. So, Emily was really bringing it with her. Like I told you she's good opinions. Um, <laughs> so I think, I mean, this episode was just fun. I mean, everything we talked about was fun. Vicky's uh, what's that called? Resurgence was yeah. so fun to see. I mean, I'll take any Vicky I can get. And that was great. <laughs> Gina moments were obviously boring. We already talked about that. And then Tamara has a little bit of fake drama drudging or whatever, but ultimately I liked where it led. Yeah. You know, this this Shannon fourth wall break. Yeah. And overall, I'd say like 80% of the episode was just like fun. Totally. Especially the slip and slide part. Totally. Do you think that next week is going to pick up during the fourth wall or do you think that's over? I, I think they should, yeah. you know, pick up. Like, it doesn't seem like Shannon was done. And I also feel like, I don't know, did they give it to be continued? I don't remember. What about when Vicky goes, and then there was one. Yeah. <laughs> She's just alone at the table, like laughing. But like... People need to be comfortable. This is a housewife's note. If any if any housewife listens, cast member, when the drama is on some, some other people and you're not the focus of it, just yeah. chill. Yeah. You don't have to be in every single scene. You're not yeah. going to get fired if you miss one scene at the pool party and you're not in the drama. It actually sometimes looks cooler if you're just standing apart and like having fun on your own. Vicky just should have just sat there. What if Vicky would have done a shot? It would have been the perfect... <laughs> segue to see her and you're just like damn vicky's like rip roaring by herself yeah so yeah it is funny that it does seem like there's no it seems like they will all actually probably be friends till they die yes for sure (laughs) for sure yeah i i I don't think i mean uh vicky has never had a worse friend in her life than tamra (laughs) if you watch oc over again tamra has thrown vicky under the bus a hundred times and vicky just keeps coming back because ultimately she just loves Tamara. Tamara has been so awful to Vicky. She's been awful to Shannon. <laughs> and for some reason, they just say, that's Tamara's character. You just have to take this yeah. from her. You they have to take an evil, <laughs> disloyal person who talks shit about you all the time, but that's Tamara. They did a game uh, where they showed a screenshot of Tamara screaming, and you had to guess who she was screaming at. And at least like three of the times it was Vicky. <laughs> yeah, the overrated, that's my opinion. What's the other one? Our fans disagree. <laughs> I, I, I saw. I finally saw the con. I finally saw the context of it. That was at a reunion, right? It was, yeah, it was something about Brooks or whatever. And Vicky's yeah. like, 
stop giving your opinion about Brooks or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. It was so unjustified. <laughs> she screamed again at the at the table before the napkin. Just she goes yeah. from zero to a ten for no reason. Yeah, and, it's and then not she apologizes. Yeah. Okay, well, OC, you want to take a break and then talk about Atlanta and Crappy Lake for five minutes? Sure. <laughs> yes. Right? Should we? Yeah, a quick little breeze through. <laughs> they, they do not warrant uh, extended conversation. Yeah. Neither of them. Yeah, okay, let's cool. do it. Hello. <laughs> Hello, we're back. I just wanted to say that uh, luckily, uh, unless I'm mistaken, I assume you don't use toilet paper when you go pee, but uh, we are currently on a roll that we bought in a pinch at 7-Eleven, and it is absolutely one ply. <laughs> so, no, I do. Every time I pee, I use toilet paper notice? to wipe off my penis. Yeah, <laughs> it was one you ply. You should have brought your own. I didn't, we had just been talking about Sai and I said, who the hell has one ply toilet paper? And then I get out and I just wipe my penis off You're of all raw. of its pee. And you have one ply. I, I, I can't believe it. I, Where did you get it from? 7-Eleven. They serve one <laughs> they ply? They serve one ply on a platter. What's the price difference? Um, oh, not to well, get into. Well, the thing is that they, they, that's like all they have. Okay. So it's like, you can't. They have shitty toilet paper. So, but it's on the corner. It's the only place that you could walk to very quickly and buy it in a pinch. And the other day, um, we were like on the verge of running out, and Jimmy was going to Seven Eleven anyways. So and said, I was like, "Get that shitty toilet paper so just to get, get us through." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but all my friends know this. This came up a lot during the um, Sandoval Ariana batteries conversation. Right. Um, and did he say batteries and toilet paper? Is that what he said? Yeah. Um, and and pens. I think, so. yeah, and pens. I think every relationship probably has the one person that generally picks up the slack there. And we've fallen into a tragic middle ground where we both hate buying those things. And so we often find ourselves in a position where we are running low. You don't like buying toilet paper? No. Why? Call me Ariana. So I did I already tell you my hack? You just buy paper towels at the same time and it just looks like you have <laughs> paper products and no one can really distinguish if it's toilet paper or paper towels. You don't ever do that? Are you saying you you flush paper towels no 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 no. when i go to trader joe's and i have to buy toilet paper usually it coincides with a paper towel run do you buy okay. paper towels as well we run out a lot okay so when you're when you're potentially you can mask your toilet paper purchase with paper towels and just sort of push them together and hold them together so that no one really knows what the hell you're doing it just looks like you're buying paper products you didn't ever do that i don't understand your logic <laughs> Are you uncomfortable about buying toilet no, paper? No, I'm not uncomfortable. Oh. I just don't like... It's like always more expensive than you think. Toilet paper? Yes. Mine's $5 at Trader Joe's, the super soft. And it's six For rolls. For how many? Six. Six rolls, five... Six rolls won't last you very long. We use one roll a day. <laughs> <laughs> so weekly basically yeah every six days i know on sunday i get new toilet paper for us but you recommend that trader joe's super soft oh yeah do you go to trader joe's <laughs> you've never bought toilet paper from trader joe's i'm sure i have but um i usually would just go get like a Charmin. oh okay yeah Charmin is amazing stuff i mean two <laughs> or three ply the problem though with trader joe's is sometimes they have the toilet paper behind where the registers are so you always have to tell the people exactly. at the cashier do you think people were stealing toilet paper because uh, that's why I never buy it there because I forget and then it's too late and then I don't want to be like, oh, Ugh, I have to go over there. Oh, uh, same you didn't with tell their me, um, mineral water. Yeah, you didn't tell me your reason. That makes sense. It, it's they. Well, I think they have shelving space behind them, so they they get the things that I guess you look at as you're going out. But I do forget. Yeah, and it does. It is kind of sad that I have to tell the person like, hey, <laughs> I need to add six rolls of toilet paper to this order. Yeah, I wish you didn't have to do that, but that's a small, shitty thing that I have to suffer. For so many great things that Trader Joe's offers. And their toilet paper is great. Yeah. I mean, the best case scenario is Costco, but we just don't have room for it all. Then don't you have to get like 60 rolls? But it's like $20 for like where do four you, months worth. Where would you store them? A lot of times I'll keep it in my car. The toilet paper? The abundant overage. Wow, we're learning a lot <laughs> about each other. I didn't know anything about this. I did buy recently when I did my little uh, bathroom makeover. Um, I bought a tin 
thing oh. that holds like four rolls. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we put ours just in our closet that's next to our toilet. So whenever we're getting to the point where it's like there's only six sheets. What are they called? <laughs> squares? When you're three sheets to the wind. <laughs> we're three sheets to the wind or we have six and sheets And you don't left. have a square to spare. Yeah. We immediately... Um, always just can grab, you know, from the closet, which is very close and then put them in there. But I actually like the idea of a tin where it has three in there. Yeah. So if a guest is in there, they don't have to come out with their <laughs> pants around their ankles and say, scooting the through your God, halls. <laughs> for the love of God, can I have toilet paper? Exactly. Oh man. Isn't it amazing that we're just so flush with toilet paper now? I mean, except oh, post COVID. Yeah. Post COVID. Yeah. Like, that's Remember even, the horror? We don't even have to think about that now. Although I low key, there's a Walgreens on Western and Sunset that had toilet paper the whole time. What? Where? Western and Sunset. They always had toilet paper? Yeah. What was the hack they had? I don't know. I just a would, huge, every time I went there, they had it. Huge toilet paper supplier in the... Yeah, it was there. my life hack. We got so bad toilet paper shortage that one time, like, someone had given us a gag gift of Trump <laughs> toilet paper so <laughs> that you could it. shit on his... Uh, well, I guess the, the idea is that his <laughs> face is being wiped with shit on your ass or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it was yeah. one ply. What are you talking- yeah, do you get it? It's <laughs> it's one ply and it's Trump's face or whatever. We got to the point where we had to, <laughs> before an Amazon order came in, we had to use this horrible <laughs> joke That's toilet hilarious. paper. And talk about one ply. Oh, man. Yeah, I uh, I think during that time, I also bought a bunch of um, like camping TP like little like mini travel rolls. I just bought like a what whole. What are those? Half rolls? They're just like tiny little like portable. Like now since I have a bunch of them, um, I keep them like in my like emergency go bag. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I have like an earthquake kit and stuff. So you're so. kind of like Sai. <laughs> I mean, don't we all want a good ply? I just have never been in a circumstance unless I'm going to a gas station bathroom or a Starbucks bathroom where it's one ply toilet paper. Well, Two is the standard. Right. Three, it, you're like, whoa, am I, you know, what, what the best? Yeah, Charmin is like Charmin's a amazing. pillow. Do you like those Charmin bears? No, they gross me out. Oh. I don't want to think about their poopy my, ass. My wife, Megan, who you know, you've met her before. <laughs> she, every time those Charmin bears are on, she loves them she so loves them? much. Okay. Because yeah, they're all like, so happy and warm and cozy and yeah. they don't show their shit yeah. on their butts or them wiping their I just think it's asses. weird that we're all like skirting around that we're talking about them wiping their ass. I know. I know. But that's just, that's the like <laughs> unwritten thing that we have to talk about in life. It makes it sort of embarrassing sometimes to buy. The rest is still unwritten. <laughs> I prefer the Mucinex monster, as we've discussed. Right. You like that. Okay. So you, if they're cute and they're wiping shit off their butt, you don't like it. But the Mucinex guy, you like him. Yeah. We what, don't, yeah. what about when the Mucinex guy puts on a disguise so they don't know that he's the mucus and he's wearing like a fedora and a disguise? Do you remember those so commercials? Fun. Love so, it. Okay. So you like What do you think you, about the little um, Charmin? No. Is it who? Puffs. Remember the Puffs little weird cartoons with the red noses? Oh yeah, are they are they like little babies? They're like little people. <laughs> yeah, they're little pe- people with with red noses. Is it because the the toilet paper is scratchy? Because they had like one ply oh. tissues. Oh right, and it's like they're using it on their nose, and um, they they're getting all red from it. Yeah, right? I don't remember. Those didn't last long. The they Charmin were bears. like Christmas vibes. The puffs. Yeah. They're so cute. Well, anyways. Okay. <laughs> We just can't help but get ourselves closer and closer to the three hour mark. However we can. However we can. All right. Well, speaking of shit. Yeah. We can do top. We're going to do the crappy like minute. Yes. We have scarcely more than a minute to say. And no one needs us to talk about crappy like for longer. You watch it. It's it's 18 minutes of content. It goes by like a blink of an eye. You know, Luann and Sonia are being fun. Yeah. Right. And then so we'll talk about it for what? One minute. I just wanted to point out. Our favorite guy, the potentially drunk at all times motel owner, uh, helps them uh, carry a box and immediately rips off his toenail and bleeds everywhere. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's talk about it for a second. Well, I don't know what the hell he was doing. What did he do? First of all, he's wearing flip-flops, which are sure. dangerous. But then he <laughs> bangs his toe into the door. He must not have been thinking. Disgusting. Or he's on camera. Or he's drunk. Or he's drunk. He rips there's blood off. everywhere. Blood everywhere. And it's gushing. And when they show Luann taking care of him, which was so sweet yeah. of her. Like she's former nurse. 
Right. Yeah. She was not skittish at all. Like that was so sweet. She immediately, I mean, it just starts out with this like horrific accident right from the start. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, Sonia's like, there's blood on the carpet. And yeah. she goes, they'll think it's deer blood. They'll love it. They're yeah. used to it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, the motel owner's wife, I think they're both co-owners. Yeah. She uh, wrote on my TikTok when I talked really? about Kathy Lake. Yeah. She said, um, my husband's toe is much better now. It's completely healed. And she goes, Luann and Sonia were so nice to us off camera, especially. <gasps> she was just so good to everyone in the town. Oh. So I loved hearing that. I love that. Yeah. Um, Okay, and then, um, oh, I like there was just a quick moment when um, Sonia, before going to the party or whatever, says, I have to post my liposuction or I'm not going to get paid. Yeah, I like that too. <laughs> I like I like seeing how the sausage was made there, that yeah. she has to, you know, pay to play or whatever. Yeah, um, she quickly at one point says, um, everyone complains I don't pay my interns. They don't want to get paid. Right. It's like, okay. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, there's <laughs> no more uh, excuse needed, right? They don't yeah. want to get paid. That's over. Um, the mayor says, mayors aren't supposed to cry. Yeah. Don't make me cry. Did you know mayors aren't supposed to cry? I had, I knew that. I knew he was going to say that because they say that they cannot get the jungle um, gym. Yeah. The jungle gym. And yeah, that was, that was so sad. But the conversation that they had geared up for, it went okay. Do you think that the testicle festival is always in that town? Yeah. And that's part of why they chose this town. Yes. This town has a lot going on, actually. Royalty parties. Yeah. Benton. <laughs> well, Benton Follies is a construction for the show. But yeah. testicle festival. Crappy the lake. Mud in. Mud in. Yeah. I mean, they, they have to have fun. Boot barn or whatever. The barn. Yeah. With yeah. The clothes on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. They do have a lot of fun like, stuff. You would think the testicle festival would put them on the map. Yeah, so I do think it is Benton because um, in the very first episode when they're talking about the virtues of Benton, they say we host the Testicle Festival. And then someone said we go to this every year. We come here for a week. So I do think it's a Benton thing. I I was wondering about the Testicle Festival. Is it for, like, it's horrible to think about this, but (laughs) is it bulls that are, like, killed? Like, and then they obviously take their ball sack and their balls <laughs> and they feed them to people or is it when they're castrated like right it, i like, don't know which do you think do you think it, it's all the the balls of dead bulls <laughs> or are, do they all just get castrated at a certain point i don't know why do they castrate them yeah i would think you would want bulls to mate with cows are, cow, are all cows female and bulls are male maybe i mean no, i guess that's dairy cows is it oh right yeah. Isn't it wild that I don't <laughs> we know, don't know that anything I don't about know the, the answer to that? I'm not even putting you in the <laughs> same category as me, but bulls because are... Because as we know, I don't eat our little cow friends. But, right. So you should not know. But I should know because no. I should know more to inform my decision. But Oh, man. Well, regardless, I think bulls have sex with cows. And I guess they're maybe castrating them when they don't want them to have sex anymore. or they Is just that want... part of the rodeo culture? Probably. Maybe to get them um, <laughs> less rowdy. Maybe. Yeah. Or, or they just want those delicious balls, right? <laughs> well, Luann ends up loving it. Yeah. I um, thought as much as I like to embrace um, other cultures and embrace the quirks of <laughs> different towns, I'm just going to be honest. This party didn't look very fun. <laughs> I didn't like anything about it. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't even like, there wasn't enough other fun stuff for them to be doing. It's just, it was people in whitey tidies. Yeah. Like jumping around on balls. Right. And eating just fried balls. And there was like maybe two beers or three beers that you could have. And yeah. you're sitting in the hot sun with watching people in their underwear. Bound. I was like, this, this is not that fun. No. You guys, how long have you guys been doing this? 12 <laughs> years? I know they need some help. Um, yeah. But yeah, I liked how Sonia bounced on the ball and then did a somersault at the end. Yeah, that was nice. What about the person who said that this was their anniversary every single year oh they went to this? That was, I mean, no <laughs> no shame if you enjoyed this, but I just didn't think it had the hallmarks of a thing that you'd want to do over and over. Yeah. I mean, I know the balls, I'm sure, like taste good, but I don't know. It wasn't even ironic enough to yeah. be justifiable. The bar is low. Did you did you see merit to it or am I like am I no, out on a limb? It looked boring. I honestly like kind of like watched it like half assed that part because yeah. I was kind of like nothing's happening here. Yeah, the, the, the I, royal I tea was more fun. Royal tea was more fun, but this this had the least fun events in it. I would have thought Tesco Festival was more fun. I liked mudding more. Yeah. I liked them going to the bar more. This this unfortunately is my least favorite episode of Crappy Lake. It yeah. had 
just events that I just didn't. Th- even crappy hour wasn't very fun. No. I was like, why do we even have to see that? No. But I, I like how the owner of the motel got pissed. Like, he was like, you guys got to help us. And then at the end, they were like, we're leaving. And yeah. he was like, no, you have to help us clean up. Like, he was like, you're actually in service of me. <laughs> right. Like, you guys actually have to clean up after right. yourselves. Um, right. Okay. So then there's like the royalty. I like that. Um, uh, Sonia said that the royalty is an incubator for talent. Yes. There's just talent everywhere. Um, also, um, <laughs> the, just the moment when Luann forces like 30 people to wait before taking the photo so she can touch up the red mark on her forehead from her hat. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Oh, wow. Um, and then, yeah, there's tryouts. Um, so that, yeah, they bring the talent from royalty. There was like, oh, there's a violinist. Oh, there's a contortionist. Oh, there's a yeah. guy who likes Broadway. They're like, yeah. okay, get to our talent show. And this talent show now was stacked with talent. Um, Majorly. The um, one thing I did think was funny, which you mentioned, is that there's a contortionist. Contortionist. He gets his arm <laughs> stuck behind his head, and he goes, Luann, please, for the love of God, can you like pull my arm out of its socket? Nurse Luann back down? again. And then, uh, so, yeah, so Luann helps him. She's horrified, and then Luann goes, "That's a five star." And then you, <laughs> they show the star ratings. Luann gave him a one. <laughs> Luann hated that contortionist. <laughs> well, she was act. pissed. She had to crack his arm back in place. And while he was doing it, uh, Sonia says, this could be on Ripley's Believe It or Not. <laughs> yeah. Sonia like, just gives everyone okay. a five. Sonia gives everyone a five star. There was not one one act well, that she gave. What about the blind stand-up comedian? Yeah, it was good. Who well, said that two bananas, two banana peels next to themselves are called slippers. And she said, when you're... <laughs> vision impaired like me everything's a slipper yeah and then she goes i've heard in la you know there's so much traffic that you know <laughs> you basically have to uber from your bedroom to your what bathroom she and said. it'll cost you <laughs> <laughs> next week we should do a full che diaz minute oh man i mean i i think i i watched the episodes but i'm half watching i i think it's i mean my opinion <laughs> it's very, very bad. It's batshit. I like that they keep they keep teasing the audience that Che and Miranda <laughs> are going to break up, and everyone is like, "Yes, you know, please." <laughs> and then they're like, "No, Miranda, I'm sorry." And, she, and Miranda's like, "You know, I forgive you too." And it's just like, God damn, everyone wants this relationship over. Right? Yeah, oh man, it's hilarious. It's honestly my saving grace every week after Riley leaves, and we've exhausted all energy and given it to you guys in a three hour bottle. I have Kardashians and just and and just like that, and I feel whole again. Oh, good. So do you do you like it ironically, or do you think it's actually getting good and it's giving you the Sex and the City <laughs> love or you know, whatever um, ethos? I think it want. has a few. Every now and again, you'll get a flash yeah. of like what it could have been. Yeah. Like, I think two episodes ago was actually decent, where Carrie dates that startup guy yeah i was just i gonna thought say, that was a pretty good episode yeah i was just gonna say i i, I liked that i was like an isolated because that's Carrie. exactly what the show used to be yes like boyfriend of the week yeah and, I, and I like the ultimate decision that he was married to his work or whatever and yeah she realizes and she that. like i've i watch it a lot i watch sex and city a lot um at night it's on e like every night mm. at like 11 p.m and i'll just like watch three in a row and yeah it's exactly what she she'll date someone you'll meet a new guy that you haven't met before she'll find out what his like red flag is or whatever yeah. and then you never see him again yeah so it felt you know fun yeah i, I saw merit to that but god overall, forbid the show be fun i know oh no it can't be <laughs> um, um but i'll never stop watching it so. okay all right good well i'm glad it's uh you know bringing you joy yes that's all that matters in life <laughs> um okay so we can do a quick atlanta touch base yeah i feel like we're getting I know that you thought this episode was a flop, but I feel like they keep kicking it down the line where like we're going to get there eventually. There's going to be a blowout. Yes. Yes. So this episode is, uh, I'd say, filler, which is bad for a trip. But the trip is suffering from a lot of things. First of all, Candy and Kenya have to go to the hospital oh because God. Kenya, just like me, <laughs> I was falls say. on her ass and <laughs> almost fractures a backbone yeah she doesn't fracture it but i know that pain Ugh. so so much were now. you triggered oh 
oh, I couldn't even imagine how bad that hurt her. It, like when she got up and she's almost crying. No yeah. one wants to cry, you know, on camera from pain. Yeah. I felt so bad for her. Well, so Candy and Kenya yeah. are, are out. <laughs> when she goes, Candy, can you go with me? I was like, fuck. I, oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, and then it's raining in Algarve. It's like yeah. the rainy season or whatever. So well, she should have thought twice before wearing slippers out into the uh, rainy, yeah. you know. But she was already an hour late. She didn't even get her shoes on. And yes. then she ate shit. And then, and then, did you see there was a banana slipper warning? It yes. said, there was a banana that said, please love it. But it was too far. It was cute that it was a banana peel. But it was too far out. It wasn't. Yeah. It should have been right outside the door. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, also, right before that had happened, the like to be continued from last week, um, <laughs> when Drew's crying, Kenya goes, how many people are on this trip? They go, eight people. She goes, what's a thousand divided by eight? She was like, can we just split your lawsuit and pay it off? Yeah. <laughs> As if like I, I, it was about money. I loved it. And then I did the math. <laughs> how much was it? 125. Wow. That would That's be like the easiest price lawsuit. of a dinner. Yeah. yeah. The easiest lawsuit ever to squash. But, um, yeah. and then I, you know, some of the drama, which I thought is good, actually organic drama yeah. was, um, uh, candy after Drew cries. <laughs> and I thought she legitimately cried. I really thought yeah. I was in Drew's right. corner. Candy goes and scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, damn, I mean, it was that's, giving check, please. Yes, totally. I, I thought for candy to say that, to accuse Drew of fully faking crying. I was like, damn, that's interesting. They're supposedly friends. Yeah. Um, and then that is sort of teased throughout the episode, but Candy is gone for so long that they yeah. can't get to it until yeah. the end. Yeah. Um, um, although Drew basically reveals that the reason she was yes. upset was that she was worried that her husband was fucking around because every time he travels, someone offers to oil him up and oil him down. Also, she said that the producer who was on the music video who oiled him down and massaged <laughs> oil in his skin to his skin for the already no video is the person who invited him to Vegas right. to, to work on the, the, what was it called? Black magic Mike. Yeah. Right. So of course she'd be worried. Right. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, a- yeah. Uh, <laughs> right before Kenya falls, um, candy, when she comes out to go on the trip or whatever, um, she says that she just took Imodium and Drew goes, okay, Imodium. <laughs> <laughs> Which made me laugh. <laughs> I like that. Okay, anything. Okay, Imodium. <laughs> That's awesome. I like that. Um, um, they also, I, well, I don't know. I mean, we're kind of like skipping around because it's yeah, like yeah, very, yeah. it's very breezy episode. But yeah. when they talk about Bolo, I don't know who brings <laughs> it up. Like Courtney brings up how close she lives to Bolo yeah. or where her house is to Bolo. She was at six miles away from Bolo. Yeah. And Sonia goes, well, if six miles is away, you could still reach Bolo, right? And it's a <laughs> reference to his penis size. Yes. I, thought was, I was like, damn. <laughs> That's Sonia hilarious. was killing it there. Uh, yeah. Um, I liked the conversation about uh, they call from the hospital and say, you know, it's chaos and that they're waiting in line. And, uh, <laughs> Marlo's like, she's like, I can't believe they're waiting that long. She goes, it's, this is really about being worldwide. Now they need to let, <laughs> she need to have connections yeah. to get she's into like, the, yeah. the hospital. And Moneta's like, they need to get someone else in there and say, she is a VIP. I'm like, you're going to go to a Portuguese, hospital with that's overrun with like ailing people and be like we have a vip right. yeah I, yeah also yeah yeah i just couldn't believe that marlo like used that as a as a, you know shade on uh candy like this is the true test of if she's world <laughs> right. wide or not she's like, like candy just blends in everywhere she goes like yeah. even at an er they're just like she's she accused her of being short and basically boring. Yeah. yeah. Awful. Yeah. Marlo hates candy right now. But I'm like, candy yeah, what would Beyonce do if she broke her back in a in Portugal? Yeah. I mean, obviously, <laughs> I think someone would be there to talk about how like she needs to be seen right. immediately. But I mean, production must have done them dirty. Like, you would think that if you, they were filming there, they would have had like a medic out. tie-in. True. You know? Yeah. I mean, I just... I just imagined it was like the busiest day in the world in Algarve so. and they just couldn't, it was like what, seven and a half hours that they were there. <laughs> Such a nightmare. So then the, you know, the group without them sort of has to, I'd say flounder a little bit. They like, they get dinner. Uh, nothing really happens. They go to a very, very boring uh, pottery painting. Yeah, they could have cut that. And, and then uh, Moneta and Sonia sort of have a, a like they they start to fake like they're having mm-hmm. a dramatic moment just to like 
get everybody roused up like, right r- right yeah it was like it was like a this is what fight. could happen yeah play fight and then drew and uh Sheree sort of think that it maybe it could possibly be real and they also <laughs> advertised it like that was a real fight. right they were promoting it and i was like okay that was fake you know, out yeah that was shitty yeah and um, then anything else before they get to the beautiful fun the hotel hang yeah no okay yeah then it ends with uh Sheree invites everybody to a pajama party yeah. she gets pizza. room service room service the food looked pretty good actually yeah i was i was stoked it wasn't uh, related to portugal in any way it was like spaghetti and pizza but it looked good yeah it looked good uh kenya and candy are back which the entertainment level just skyrockets <laughs> um you know yeah. just just inherently because yeah. they're fun and they know how to make a scene entertaining they all basically go around the room talking about their grief or what they're doing and if they have any grievances or whatever yeah. like they check in on drop it with drew and drew goes <laughs> drew's like um yeah drop it drop it with drew still exists but she's like <laughs> you don't see it she doesn't talk about it and she doesn't want to talk about it no. anymore it's just like this this enterprise that she had just is completely gone right. from the drew universe she's yeah. over it now totally flop yeah and then yeah candy's like leaving the next morning so her trip was a total bust she had like massive diarrhea the whole way there (laughs) the second day she had to be in the er for seven hours for someone else yes and then she leaves literally the next day um trip and drew's like well if you're leaving then i'm gonna talk my shit to you before you go (laughs) right she takes her opportunity she's wanted it the entire time and i really felt like this candy is just so good at deflecting all yeah. oncomers she's just so confident in herself she doesn't lie she doesn't spread fake drama she just she nips any drama in the bud that yeah. comes to her um in a way to where like i think uh sonia says she's teflon don like, nothing <laughs> sticks to her yeah so she just completely negates drew's feelings right she's just like yeah. i've seen you get in way worse scrapes with the cast members than that yeah and you never cry so i just right. thought it was fake yeah she goes to be honest, I think everyone gets too uptight around here. Yes. Like, she's basically like, everyone needs to chill the fuck out. Like, that is not worth talking about, basically. Did you like Candy's sweater? What did it say? It said, do I look like I fly economy? Huh. Sheree made fun of her for that. What did she call her? She compared her to someone I didn't know who yeah, she was Cleo, talking about. Yeah, um, I didn't write it down because I wasn't sure, but it, it was um, it was Queen Latifah plays a character named Cleo, and I forget the movie, <laughs> but I looked up the photos. And I was like, oh, was damn. Was it accurate? Oh, I was like, Candy is giving Cleo for sure. I forget That's what the hilarious. movie was. It was it, we should it was post a, it on Instagram. Yeah, it was a spot on reference. That's really like, funny. Good, do- good job. Um, on Watch What Happens, Candy... Uh, they asked if Candy had any advice for Aaron from Roni. And she said, always tell the truth because you don't want them to roll the tape back on you and stand by what you say. Don't let them make you feel guilty or backtrack. And that's like Uh, what you just said. I think that's iconic advice. Both of those tenets are good. I I would say was one of them be, no, it wasn't be true to yourself. It was just like, be honest in general so that they can't, play you a fool yeah someone else said this too also like how to be engaging or whatever it's just like just be yourself do not try to fit into a mold or be another archetype just be yourself because the audience knows when you're being fake and you're not true to yourself yeah you want them to just love you at your hundred percent you and not be like drew you don't really get a sense of her personality because you don't know what actually is offending her she's not yeah. being honest about her ralph relationship right. she does lie yeah like so i don't know i mean she's definitely lying in this uh yeah next part so oh, oh I, I did like like there sure <laughs> just brings up I don't know where she goes. I didn't see any of you on the list of buyers of She Buy Sheree. And everybody <laughs> immediately gets out their phones, like Moneta <laughs> and, and Sonya, and they go, oh, we wanted to. Oh, shit, we just forgot, and the <laughs> website was down. Let's. I'm going to buy it right now. And they're like, and then uh, Sonya is like, Sheree, um, she's like, sorry, so when I get to this point in my cart where I'm adding to my cart, how do I get to the next stage? And Sheree's like, these, these girls are pretending they don't know how to navigate a website now. <laughs> like, it was really silly that That's they all – they, they, once you put the pressure on them, they all finally just like signed up and started to buy <laughs> She by Sheree yeah. merchandise. Did you like how at, in that boring pottery scene, she Googled the She by Sheree yes. logo and it was painting a custom She by Sheree yes. item? Yeah, I did like that. And then she goes, I totally fucked up the She by Sheree <laughs> logo. She was like, I love stars. Yeah. So then once um, they get like all of that out of the way and they're like, okay, we can all like just have fun now. They just start dancing. 
right? Yeah. They immediately yeah. just start dancing. And then production calls a wrap at 11.47 p.m. They yeah. said, all right, I guess everybody's just going to dance and yeah. there's going to be no more <laughs> drama here. So they left. Marlo sets up her phone because a fight has erupted. Candy, in her, she's in her truth-telling era. She doesn't yeah. give a shit. She says, uh, Drew, for a fact, when the bolo night, which was one of the most iconic yeah. you know, scenes in Atlanta yeah. history, like three seasons ago, I think it was. Yeah. That Drew totally kissed Latoya, who yeah. I think was a friend of. I, I don't like remember forgot Lato- about her. Yeah, I don't remember. Her. She was. She must have been friend of because she was on the reunion. She's on the reunion. I, I, she had to have been a friend of. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't forget cast members whole cloth. Yeah. So she said at the reunion that Drew and her made out, and Drew sort of like Brittany in Vanderpump Rules <laughs> does not want to be associated with kissing women at yeah, this point yeah. in her life. Wants to deny it with all of her might so this fight erupts and candy is just you know a truth teller i totally trust yeah and, and marlo says it everyone says yeah. it. I, it latoya said it so i fully believe drew said it and candy's like i'm not lying for you i saw yeah. what i saw you're not gonna tell me that i'm lying to anyone uh, yeah. marlo even comes to candy's defense and she's i forget what she says she goes you would lie dead before you lie <laughs> i was like damn marlo yeah, they don't even to- like each other yeah um yeah she uh <laughs> then when Drew's denying it, she says, because she's like, I don't even know where that came from. And they're like, she said it on the reunion and they roll the tape and she goes, oh, well, Latoya told me that Candy told her to say that. Oh, and I'm like, yeah. Candy does not play like that. Like, no, come no, on. No, that is something that potentially Tamara would do. Candy would never. LVP maybe. LVP for sure. <laughs> Candy is not do, one. Yeah. The biggest strengths of Candy is that you can just trust her. Right. That, it's such a breath Don't of fresh start air. none. Won't be none. Exactly. And then we get sort of a, like a Scandaval edit. I was like, yeah. it was like what? Six months later or three months later. Yeah. It's like, damn. Yeah. All of a sudden, I, which I was like, I can't believe the Drew and Ralph drama is on this season. I was so excited. I was like, wow. Right. I, I thought, I thought it had happened post right. um, filming. So right. That was so exciting. <laughs> I like when they were like, Marlo, did you see her make out with Latoya? And she goes, 80% I saw it. They're like, what's the other 20%? She was like, she has me confused. Yeah, I don't know. She's like, her acting. <laughs> Which like, like, that's what would happen to me. I'd be like, I don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was a really good, honest answer. And I like that they got to the bottom of it, the producers. Yeah. That's so funny. And then, yeah, we see this th- this montage of like, there is apparently a rumor going around that Drew, first of all, I think it's tied into like the movie, maybe somebody she Right. on set that she's having an affair with someone i forget th- their name yeah ty? ty i think um she's like a basketball player wow so and it's not even about i think i always thought it was about the woman she's kissing in the scene yeah, right me too but it's not yeah it's more like it's allegedly like, an or it's affair. a real person so and then and then there's like articles that are swirling at you and it's just like ralph Ralph says this is the reason why they're divorcing. Yeah, and he and filed for divorce. And then was it in a promo somewhere or did I read it that he raced to yes, divorce we, we her? Yes, we were talking about yeah. it. They both, they, <laughs> the minute that Drew said, I'm divorcing you, <laughs> he got in his car and started <laughs> racing her to get there first yeah. to the divorce court. Um, when they, Andy was asking Candy about it, because obviously like she knows about the movie and the onset stuff um, and she's friends with that woman. Um, but Candy basically was like, I didn't get involved. Like she wouldn't really say anything about it. She was like, I thought it was best to mind my business. So wow. She was keeping it clean. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that provided like, I'm like, I'm excited to see the disillusion of Drew and Ralph's marriage. (laughs) I don't like them together. I feel like maybe now I think she's currently breaking down and that's why she's so emotional. And I think once all of this shit occurs, she can finally, Here's blow it open. Here's why I acted this and way. Here's everything that's been going on this whole time. I mean, I wish she could be more, you know, uh, look, tell the truth as it's going, but it sounds like, yeah, a huge fall is coming and she can blame her emotions on this, which is right. You know, yeah. it's, it's valid. Um, anything. Else? Well, I guess just to end this, I was like, okay, I'm excited about Atlanta. This is pretty, you yeah. know, this is a wild thing to happen. Yeah. It's crazy that it ties back to Bolo. Like that's yeah. so, such old news, but <laughs> it, is perfect for what's to come, I guess. Yeah. So, so cool. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, two hours and 46 minutes, you can't say we didn't have a podcast, right? <laughs> we came, we saw, we said it all. We did. Who says that? <laughs> Me. Whoa. Oh my God. That's how we should end every episode. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I think if you, you know, enjoy those Bravo shows and you enjoy our commentary, I think we fulfilled the two aspects of our job here today. 
And then uh, Amy and I are, are going to, can I just tell, you know, sure. our Turtle Time listeners, we have such a wild schedule now that we're going to watch a Vanderpump Rules episode for our Patreon. Yes. And then record. Yeah. The latest episode of our Patreon. I don't know what the hell is happening in Vanderpump Rules. It's been two weeks since we've talked, but yeah. I think that's going to be fun. So let's say goodnight to our little turtle cuties, right? Yes. Anything we need, like little business. I mean, we are, we got to our YouTube goal. Oh, yeah, we should have said that up front because we've been begging you guys <laughs> yeah, for we so just, long. We don't care at all. Yeah, Yeah, we, we hit a thousand. And so sh- sorry, there's ads now. <laughs> Oh, right. Oh, sorry that we were pushing for something that benefits us, but that actually makes your (laughs) enjoyment much less, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, But I'm sorry, but just know that you're putting money in Amy and I's pockets. We can be rich someday. They put ads on them immediately. Yeah. The minute we clicked it, it was like, okay, we're running ads on this. So that was fun. And then if you want to support us even more, if you want us to get even richer, which I don't even know if you can imagine that. Amy and I are more rich <laughs> than we are. Please subscribe to Patreon where we are keeping the Vanderpump Rules fun going. We are in the thick of it, season two. So please subscribe to our Patreon and get more of Amy and I. You have to have more, right? They can't get enough. You can't get enough. We love you so much. All right, do Anything else to say? No. All right, Ready to sign off. Let's end it here. All right. Bye, guys. Goodbye. <laughs> this one.